Black Hack in the City State series for the Gauntlet. Um, we are doing Under the Hellbridge tonight, exploring the city state of the, of the o Invincible Overlord classic dungeon, um, uh, the Hellbridge Temple. Um, and uh, we'll be kicking off in just a, in just a few minutes. Uh, but first, I want to let my, my group of players introduce their characters. Um, and I am going to snake. We had some questions while ago, and I am going to snake back in the opposite direction and start with uh, Mike, who's playing Minosa. And I've, I've got everybody muted right now, so if you can switch yourselves on and off mute as you need to. Uh, but Mike, playing Minosa, will introduce the character. All right, so I'm playing Minoso. He is um, a mystic, which means, uh, you know, from a young age, he's always had the ability to uh, commune with spirits. Uh, for some reason, he tends to attract the attention of uh, forgotten deities. Uh, and uh, and perhaps perhaps they've uh, they've latched onto him because he works as an acolyte at a temple of a god that is um, actually that people actually still care about. And that's basically uh, his deal. He uh, out of our <coughs> merry band of players, he's most familiar with. Asherath, who he keeps an eye out for, because uh, Asherath uh, seems to be uh, have the favor of uh, one of the near dead uh, thief gods that he uh, that he uh, communes with, and he's uh, because he tries to keep an eye out for him. So uh, that's his. Uh, that's basically his deal. Minosa, um, I won't bore you with all the details, but do you see um, yourself working primarily for the the Temple of Knowledge, the Temple of War, or the Temple of Death? Uh, let's make it Knowledge. Awesome. Or maybe Death. No, it's the Temple of Death. And that maybe okay. that's maybe that's why he draws uh, the draws the attention of spirit, of gods who are almost dead. Or, yeah, who are almost dead. That's awesome. All right. All right, and then uh, sneaking back in that same direction, uh, I believe we went to uh, Bailey, uh, played by Rory. Howdy. Hey, Bailey. Can you, can you hear me? I hear you again. Okay, cool. All right. Um, okay, so um, Bailey is the play. I'm playing the kid. Um, Bailey is lives in... Um, the dark streets of the city, and um, he's kind of gotten a raw deal. Um, he's probably an orphan. Um, he steals because he doesn't know any other way to, you know, uh, earn his keep, so to speak. Um, but he is um, not as damaged by his surroundings. He is still, um, for some reason, clean looking and can pass for a regular kid if he needs to. Um, and um, yeah, so that's, that's Bailey. All right. And then I think coming back around, we come to Asherah, uh, the witch. All right. Uh, Asherah, Asherah is a witch, uh, warlock, uh, brujo, as the case may be. Um, he is uh, by day a fortune teller. Um, oftentimes by night, also a fortune teller, but uh, he has uh, learned his arts, uh, dark and otherwise, um, the hard way. Uh, he's 21, but he looks a lot older. His uh, brown skin is like dried leather. Um, his face and arms are covered in scarification and tattoos, and uh, he wears a dark blue turban at all times. People note that his eyes are full of pupil, nearly black. Um, and, uh, you know, that might be because of some of the herbs that he had to ingest while studying. Um, and if it's okay, I was going to make his spell book be a, uh, like a sort of kipu, like a, like an Inca kipu, you know, the, the, the knots on threads. Right. Well, so as a witch, uh, you also pull your spells from your familiar. Oh, that's right. They, they actually, he actually brings it to me. Right. 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 My, uh, my mongoose. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bay, my mongoose. 
All right. Yeah, I was going to choose like a, you know, an eagle, but I was like, it just seems really unlikely that I have a <laughs> huge predatory flying bird in the city. So. Right. Okay. And uh, anything else about uh, Asherah? Uh, just that uh, he feels a bond to uh, Ephraim, who uh, has uh, bailed him out a couple times when I've uh, my tongue has gotten a little bit too sharp for my own good, and uh, he's prevented me from getting a serious beatdown. Um, Asherah, what? Uh, who was your mentor? Who taught you to be a witch? Um, a. Uh, an old man by the name of Friedlander. Awesome. All right. Okay. Um, And I think coming back around, we have uh, Chris playing Ephraim. Okay. Uh, I'm playing Ephraim. He is a very young 17 year old uh, warrior. Uh, he, <clears throat> he looks basically like a nondescript, pudgy 17 year old. Um, he's a little bit stronger than he looks um, and significantly tougher than he looks, but basically, he looks like a fat kid. Um, in an attempt to look a little tougher or older, or at least he thinks it makes him a little tougher and older, he has grown as much beard as he possibly can. It, it does not make him look any older at all. It makes him look like a kid who's trying to grow a beard. Um, so he is, uh, he tends to have a chip on his shoulder about that and about people not taking him seriously as a fighter until he you know, gets into a fight. So as we established before, he tends to get himself into fights more often than he should, um, given that his real profession is to stand around and look menacing so that fights don't happen. Um, right. But uh, that's that's kind of the that's kind of the guy he is. He's he, he's basically a good guy, but he pretends to be a, a callous, tough guy all the time in an effort to seem like he should be taken more seriously. And he's kind of overdoing it. Nice. Okay. And uh, he's taken to uh, he's uh, taken to um, Minoso because Minoso has been kind enough to uh, patch him up after he's taking a little bit too much of a beating on occasion when he's you know picked that fight with one, the one guy who was uh, willing to actually beat the crap out of him when he when he you know wised off or bowed up. Right. Okay. Most people just laugh at him, which makes him even more furious, but. It doesn't end with him getting his butt kicked. It just, nice. ends, it just ends with him fuming a lot. All right. And then that brings us back to our returning character from the Goblin Town Adventure, Asher Ash, played by Keith Martin. Uh, Keith, why don't you introduce Asher Ash to us? Uh, Asher Ash is a, is a young, he's a thief by, by necessity but he was originally a member of a, a merchant house that fell on hard times and it's kind of not really a going concern in the city state anymore. He still wears, he still wears the, the battered faded livery of his old house. A lot of the time he doesn't make his living thieving except when he absolutely has to. He, he just does odd jobs, does provide some sort of like a courier and messenger services. He, he can read and write a lot of languages. So he's, uh, he's useful in, in that, uh, in that fashion. Um, and he's, uh, he's had a, a one or two, uh, situations where he's noticed, uh, this young, uh, uh, good looking kid, uh, about to get himself in trouble with the thieves guild, because even though I am a thief, I'm not a member of the guild, but I do know how to spot their enforcers when I see him coming. So I've warned, warned Bailey off of cutting a purse when it was going to get him into more trouble than he wanted to. Right. Right. Okay. All right, you also have a you also have a cool tattoo. I do. I have a, a very cool, very very uh, dynamic uh, tattoo of a thorny ivy vine uh, around both forearms. Nice. Okay. Uh, um. 
Unquick house rule that we're using uh, in this particular game of the Black Hack is that when you, uh, you know, three times each session, you get advantage on a roll. If you can once each, because you can apply your alignment, because you can apply your bond, or because you are doing something risky because of your alignment. Uh, we have kind of our own alignment system uh, here, and uh, I won't I won't go into it and bore the audience at home. Uh, but it's brilliant. It's written by this great guy named Richard Ruane. Um, <laughs> And uh, so, but uh, those are the three times you can just automatically get advantage uh, each a set on each session on the character keeper guys. If when you when you've used that advantage, uh, or when you've used that kind of source of advantage, uh, one thing I think we've done in the past is just kind of bold and italicize so that it's clear what's kind of been used and what hasn't been used. Mm. Um, any questions before we start? Because I've got questions for you. So I'll see if you've got questions for me. <laughs> um, recently, uh, in the city state of the Invincible Overlord, for all you residents of the southeast side, uh, the Overlord has been acting like a notorious asshole, or at least the secret police have in the Overlord's name. Um, There was a break-in at a nearby temple, the Temple of the Gargoyle, uh, disrupting a, uh, a uh, sacrifice that was going to be conducted there. Uh, the sacrificial victim was released and has not been caught, uh, which is highly illegal. Freedom of worship is an absolutely unquestioned value in the city state of the Invincible Overlord. And... Uh, breaking into temples to release sacrificial victims is not only frowned on it's, it's highly illegal uh the three people who were engaged in that act have disappeared uh into the southeast side but because everyone suspected that uh most people in the southeast side knew what was up uh the overlord has canceled had canceled a um uh, or the secret police had canceled a very important uh annual festival that Southeast Siders have. Uh, and, and the the patron of the Southeast side is the Thieves Guild. Everyone knows the Thieves Guild uh, is, is the unofficial patron of the Southeast side. Uh, during the festival, uh, the Overlord, uh, or uh, the, the Thieves Guild traditionally does a, a very rich uh, dole of food to all the residents of the Southeast side. And anybody who can, who can pretend to be a resident of the Southeast side gets a, a a very lovely dole of food um this time the overlord has confiscated the dole of food and then when the thieves guild ordered more the the uh the overlord had it forbidden to enter the city and locked up on the docks still on still still in one of the, in one of the secret police warehouses um people from the southeast side hired uh, a bunch of goblins um to cause trouble, break into the warehouse and transport uh, the uh, uh, transported the uh, the food from the southeast side um, into uh, the city, uh, causing the overlord to ban all goblins from the city, um, and then have Kaftotella, who was the head of the thieves guild, arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, along with several of Kaftotella's assistants and several members of, or several people, you know, commoners, you know, regular, regular leading citizens and just regular independent individual citizens of the, of the Southeast side arrested. Um, starting with Bailey, um, who did you know who got arrested? Um, and you're muted, Rory, on the on the system. In addition to your, let me let me take you off mute real quick. Yeah, I, I have a mute on my thing here. So. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Double um, muted. 
Um, so someone I know that was arrested by the secret police or they're not so yeah. secret police. Okay. Um, so I think Bailey has an older brother, but I'm putting brother in quotes cause it's not really brother, but someone right. that he would kind of run with, um, his name was Ricky and, um, was a fellow kind of a street, uh, kid who was a little bit older and, um, a little more familiar with the ropes, you know, that kind of thing. Maybe he had some runs with the thieves go, um, whereas Bailey has not. And, um, so he was arrested and ever since then um bailey has been kind of on his own and trying to make his way and that's probably where he ran into the other pcs at some point all right wow um so ricky has been arrested ashra friedlander was arrested your mentor who else did you know from the neighborhood who was arrested uh let's see um there was a, a kid that I grew up with, kind of a contemporary, um, um, named uh, Marid. Awesome. Uh, Marid, tell me a little bit, Marid, there. So, um, he chose a, a slightly different path, a more uh, aggressive path. He has uh, political views. He has religious views. Um, he thinks that uh, if you can learn spells, you should be able to use them to affect change. Whereas uh, I don't see things that way. So it's no surprise he got caught up in this. Sort of a political witch. Yes. All right, Ephraim. Uh, basically, Ephraim knows an old uh, shopkeeper who he occasionally worked for as a bodyguard slash bouncer um, who got uh, picked up after uh, he attempted to, uh, to um, hide some of the food dole and distribute it um, after hours out of the back of his shop. Oh, wow. Uh, and what is the name of that shopkeeper? Oh, uh, Bill. Bill. And we can spell it fantasy way, just putting a Y in there instead of an I. Awesome. I live in Brooklyn, so that's that's probably also how most Brooklynites would do it too. So, uh, let's all right. And then, uh, Minoso. All right, so you got picked up by the secret police. So the person I know is um, a fellow by the name of Cooster, and that's K O O S T E R. All right. And he's uh, someone I actually healed of a disease. Uh, this is someone who had been visiting the Temple of Death, and uh, the, the God of Death had not been heeding his prayers. And then I just kind of um, took him aside, and uh, well, you know, I met him out of the temple and secretly healed him, and he agreed to uh, keep my keep my thing a secret because certainly my my masters at the temple would not be happy to see that I was um, c consorting with uh, non-death gods. But um, yeah, that's the deal. And now this person's been captured and is probably going to die anyway, which is great. Um, last but not least, Aster Ash. Uh, who did you know who got picked up? I think it was Alina. Yeah, that makes great sense. I think it was Alina. She um... It's also perfect fiction-wise. Uh, yep. Since Rich specifically based Alina on the back me on the the basic box Frank Metzer character, yep. Uh, <clears throat> a, and uh, enforcer for the Thieves Guild, a friend of yours. Uh, makes sense that Alina would get picked up. And she helped uh, secure and distribute the the food from the oh yeah from the goblins. So she was already on the on the Overlord's. Or on the secret police's watch list. So yeah, I think it was Alina.
during the arrest, and I've got a question for four of you. Um, four secret police agents who had lived in the neighborhood undetected. Um, by you, um, were revealed during these arrests and, and had to, to leave the vicinity uh, and, and uh, retreat to the Tower of the Black Lotus. The Black Lotus is the, the name of the secret police. Uh, one is a, a, a really friendly young guy named Rizvin. Um, Ashera, uh, what did Rizven do in the neighborhood? Uh, and you know, what did Rizven do in the neighborhood? Like, what was his job? And I've got, I've got everybody back on mute. So if you, if you're, if you're talking, uh, but that's, that question is for Ashera. What did, uh, Rizven do? Like, what was his, uh, uh, yeah, ostensible job. job. Yeah. Uh, he was a blacksmith. Nice. And Ephraim, why did you like Rizvin before you found out he was a member of the secret police? Well, he, he acted like he took me seriously. He was one of the few people who had, who, who I didn't have to actually like get into a fight with or at least a shouting match before they took me seriously. Nice. Nice. Uh, staying with you for a second, Ephraim, uh, an older guy, maybe mid thirties, you know, um, which is older for the Southeast side, uh, where life is not always easy. Uh, named Zar, uh, was also revealed to have been a long time member of the secret police. It was never officially stated, but he was probably the commander of the uh, of the Black Lotus on the southeast side. Uh, what did Zauer do? What was his cover identity? I would say uh, he was a um, he was one of the uh, suppliers for the merchants in the district. Like he would uh, transport goods from the docks area to the merchants in the district. So he would get to talk to and go into almost every shop and, and delivering stuff from down at the docks. Cause pretty much everybody has to get something from down there, no matter what kind of shop you're running. And who has time to do it yourself? Exactly. Cause well, if you leave the shop, you know, you've left the shop and it's there and the place is run by the thieves guild. Right. Right. Um, Pastor Ash, um, why did you always like Zauer? before you found out Black Lotus member? Um, <clears throat> why did I always like Zauer? Um, I, used to, I used to complain, I used to talk to him uh, from time to time and complain about how hard the Thieves Guild could make it on, you know, somebody like me who was not really in it for the, you know, just, just only in the, in the thieving game. Uh, because of uh, dire necessity, and uh, he always he always had a sympathetic ear for me. Um, Zara had somebody that everybody thought was Zara's girlfriend, or a partner, or, or significant other of some sort. But it also came out that she was really working for him or working with him in the secret police. Uh, her name was Rosita. And this is also for Asher Ash. What did she, what was her sort of reason for being on the Southeast side? What did she, what did she do professionally? What was her name again? Rosita. Rosita. Uh, she, um, she tended bar at the horizontal goat. I had forgotten about the horizontal goat. One of my one of my favorite bars. Uh, and then uh, Minoso. 
What did you love about Rizita before you found out she was working with the secret police? Mm, first kiss. First kiss. Nice. Uh, another woman in the neighborhood named Deshi. This question is also for Minoso. Uh, was also a, also revealed to be a member of the secret police. What had she done in the neighborhood? Uh, you mean in her in her spying um, in her, job in her or cover her, identity? Her cover, her cover identity. identity. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she was. Uh, Uh, can we say she ran an orphanage? Lovely. That is that is absolutely fantastic. The traitor orphanage runner. Who's been handling the orphans since Deshi des deserted? I don't know that anyone has. has. <clears throat> oh, wow. Maybe they're like a... They're like an autonomous collective now, with the oldest, uh... oh, or at least they're at least autonomous. I don't know how to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Bailey, you had long suspected that something was up with Deshi. What <clears throat> was it about your relationship with her that led you to suspect something was creepy, weird, or wrong? The orphanage mistress. Yeah. Um, well, she, I, I knew that she was getting money from somewhere because she had like nice clothing and kind of the finer things in life and running an orphanage typically doesn't get you those kind of things. So, um, I also noticed that some of the kids would disappear, um, with no oh, explanation wow. and, uh, yeah, so eventually I know I'm kidding all, but kind of put two and two together here and I'm like, okay, something fun is going on here. So is there a name of one of the kids who disappeared? Maybe, you know, not, not recently, but like, you know, four or five years ago, um, Trust the puberty and all of a sudden just disappears. How about Yuri? Yuri. Okay. How did you know Yuri? Um, I actually, rescued i rescued bailey rescued yuri from um some slavers that were going to capture him and take him to who knows where i assume there's some slavery in this uh place oh yeah yeah so um and the only place i could take him was the orphanage where i had been living so i took him there oh, as like nice. a refuge you know? oh did you did you live in deshi's orphanage oh definitely yeah i would have yeah okay yeah. Nice. Okay. I mean, I got out of there, but I still had friends who were there, you know? Right. Right. Okay. Um, so Yuri may be not the only person who's disappeared. Oh no. <laughs> no. Um, right on the cusp of puberty. Yeah. Um, all right. So there's the big temples. Of, uh, and I've got a question coming back around for Ashera, uh, Brian, but just to kind of give you some context, there's the big grand temples. Like even if you're not a particular religious person, everybody in the city state is, is, is proud of these three gorgeous grand temples uh, that are right there on, on Regal street. Uh, one is the temple of Hamarchus, the god of death, and one is the temple of Thoth, the god of knowledge, and one is the temple of Odin, the god of war. Um, but right across the street is a imposing but not attractive structure called the Hellbridge Temple. Um, sometimes spelled as one word, sometimes spelled as two words. Uh, depending on how old the travel guide to the city state is that you look up. Um, but uh, the Hellbridge temple is, is, you know, the, 
you know, security in the three big temples is is because they're they're large public buildings. People come and go all the time to and from the Hellbridge Temple, or sorry, to and from the three big temples uh, to seek favors, to have to to commission rites being performed. Um, and other than particular agents of the overlord, uh, not a lot of people come and go publicly from the Hellbridge Temple, except for people who work there. Uh, the most obvious people who work there are those who patrol the grounds of the Hellbridge Temple outside and come and go through the main entrance all the time. Um, and that is, uh, the fanatic guards, uh, you know, known for being particularly young, uh, particularly well-groomed, um, and, uh, we know that, you know, you, you, you know, no one that, no one that, uh, that Bailey recognizes from the orphanage is among the fanatic guards. Where do these very young, very attractive, well-groomed young men and women come from who make up the guards of the Hellbridge Temple? Asherah. Where do they come from? Um, I think they're taken from, uh, from all over the city, from orphanages, from uh, the homes of citizens who have uh, perhaps broken a law um you know the the invincible overlord's memory is long perhaps someone broke a law 20 years ago and then they show up you know now that you've finally had a kid or whatever and uh you know they take the ones that they they think are suitable so sort of tribute kids like you you the overlord needs to ensure you're they're kind of hostages maybe yeah, it works uh, doubly that way, right? So hostages, yeah. um, uh, while at the same time, you know, providing this uh, fanatically loyal uh, guard force. So the the Hellbridge, as everybody knows, is is ostensibly dedicated to the big three gods, uh, whose temples it it is close to. Uh, but everybody also knows that the real the real secret of the um, of the Hellbridge Temple, the real focus of worship at the Hellbridge is an art, an old, old artifact called the Baleful Eye of Morg. <laughs> no one knows who Morg was. No one knows how his eye got removed. Uh, but the whole purpose of the Hellbridge Temple is sort of set up to be like a, a giant reliquary for the Baleful Eye of Morg. Um, and, uh, as with many, many uh, people who get arrested uh, in the city state, your friends have been turned over to one of the temples to use as sacrifices. And of course, uh, the creepy temples, such as the Hellbridge, are the ones that are most likely to, um, to uh, buy criminals from the from the prisons of the city state and the dungeons of the overlord and uh to use them in in sacrifice in, in sacrifices um now the guards of the prison are not supposed specifically supposed to tell you um where people went or who you know what temple or, or other institution they got sold to um when they when they're suddenly not in their prison cells anymore but it was very suspicious after the first day that somebody went to visit um, one of your friends, probably uh, probably the shopkeeper, Bill. His daughter came back after him and told you that he wasn't in his prison cell. Uh, and shortly after that, uh, the bells on Hellbridge Temple started to ring, meaning they were going to have one of their weekly rituals that very night but the bells were weird and long suggesting that this is one of the important rituals that they had coming up um one that uh had not been 
uh, on the books or scheduled. Um, and uh, clearly they had recently acquired um, sacrificial victims for. Um, so it seems, it seems, it seems clear that the, uh, the people arrested from the Southeast side have been sold to service sacrifices at Hellbridge temple. Uh, and the Hellbridge is doing something with those sacrifices this very night. Um, Minoso, you know that, uh, well, everybody in the city state officially respects each other's um, religions and, uh, and divine worship, their pantheons uh, from each other during the day, that the, the upper clergy of the three temples, the upper priest of the three temples, all, including the Hellbridge, all hate each other. Um, and frequently send their emissaries to through the sewers to undermine the connecting sewers to undermine and uh, break into do minor vandalism on the other three the other temples uh, on Regal Street. Um, you suspect that in addition to the front door, there is a path you could find from underneath the temple of Hamarcus where you work as an acolyte um, into the Hellbridge temple. Um, you know, you could also try in theory to find a way to blend in and get into the, the, the get into the temple um, through the front door, though no one is aware of any other entrance official entrance to the temple other than its grand front doors. Um, even the representatives of the overlord who would normally want to be discreet about such things come and go through the grand front doors of that temple. Um, how would you guys like to get in or like to plan to get in or attempt to get in? Now, it's still a question towards me or towards the whole group. That is, that is, I was just telling you what you know. Oh, okay. Uh, that question is for the whole group. I won't have you, I won't have you make a decision for everybody. So <laughs> I, won't, I won't force you to make that decision for everybody. Because <laughs> I was just going to have them form a living bridge for me, but okay. Well. Now, Ephraim doesn't particularly like the idea of going into the sewers, but it sounds like that's a... And it sounds like that might be something that we would find a lot of other priests in at any given point, since they tend to like to use that. Uh, maybe the maybe the other maybe there might be some other path other than that, because we might be encountering a whole bunch of like past cr path crossings saboteurs as they run back and forth to, you know, knock over each other's sensors and things like that. Hmm. Have any of you ever been inside the front doors of the Temple of the Hellbridge? Do you think? Uh, so definitely not. Have been hired to loom net behind someone who had to go in there officially. Oh yeah, yeah, Ephraim. You know that uh, there's sort of a vestibule, but the uh, it's more of just an it's it's more of just a very ornate entryway, so that there's not like a, a door that you know, normally you know there'd be a door a vestibule and then another set of doors, but either those doors are always opened every time the person you hire, you hired, you goes to go there, go went there. Um, or there are no doors in the other sides of that vestibule. What are the walls like? The walls have some high windows. I, the windows are like seven or eight feet off the ground or at least seven or eight feet uh, up from the ground. Um, oh. And sort of that, you know, there's, there's a, there's a good big staircase. Um, and the, the walls seem pretty stony and thick. Okay. 
I, I'm in favor of the sneaky route. I have to tell you, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the frontal assault there on the, on the temple. Yeah. I, I don't want to do a frontal assault. I'm just worried the sneaky route may, may have us encountering like multiple groups of other people trying to be sneaky. Yeah. Isn't it the, um, the guild that mostly messes with them? Uh, the guild does mess with them, but the guild has been sort of on lockdown. Okay. Ever since, uh, ever since, uh, Kafla, Kafla uh, and his assistants were arrested. So yeah, it might be pretty empty down there. Um, I don't know. We can't, uh, I mean, Maybe uh, Asher Ash could maybe uh, climb those walls. Maybe Bailey, but um, I would be I'd be struggling. Yeah, well, wall climbing is not my strong suit either. I would that. Uh, Ephraim, make an intelligence roll. Oh, no, oh, come on! <laughs> you believe wall climbing is your thing? Huh? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question. Actually, I actually, I actually yes, made it. Amazingly enough, okay. I rolled, I rolled nice. a seven. Yeah. Uh, there was a question. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, if one of us gets up there, couldn't we lower some rope for people? Yeah, that needed you to? could. Okay. If, you, if you get up there and you're not challenged, you could definitely lower rope. So I could buy some. I don't have any rope right now, but I could buy some. Yeah, getting rope is pretty easy. Oh, I have some um, rope. I've got some rope. Okay. Uh, uh, Ephraim, you also noticed that... Uh, the person you guarded when they got to the door, uh, they had brought a purple robe with them uh, and just slid the purple robe on before walking in the door uh, before sort of ascending sort of the the stoop or the the, the steps up to the up to the main door. Uh, they put their purple robe on and, and were able to just get inside without the guards seeming to uh, say or do anything. And you notice also that... Uh, at, at the tolling of the bell, most of the guards go inside. Oh, Where did I notice he got the purple robe from? He had carried it with him. Now, uh, let's see. So, and uh, did it have any particular design on it, or was it just a robe of purple cloth? It was. It seemed to be just a robe of purple cloth. It was a, an expensive-looking purple, is an impression it left you with. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned this and asked around if anyone has seen uh, that particular shade of purple. I'd describe it as best I can. I haven't, but I like the idea of maybe if that might help us go unnoticed. Maybe we'll score us also, fact, hopes. also mentioned the fact that the guards tend to have a program when I've been in there of whenever the bell is told, the guards relocate to some other portion of the uh, of the temple. They're not in the front uh, area anymore. Hmm. I mean, that may just be because, you know, once you've got a crowd inside, it's hard to, to, have to walk in and cause, cause trouble. So what's your approach going to be? I'm feeling the um, the underground more. If even if there are other groups, if there are other groups uh, infiltrating at the same time, they could, they may very well keep each other busy enough where we can sneak past them if they if they end up encountering each other. Well, the other advantage to the underground may be that it might be closer to where they tend to keep the prisoners. Oh, uh, true. So, what do you guys think, though? Should we get should we try and get ourselves some purple robes uh, as a kind of a a backup or a way to infiltrate once we're inside. I think that makes a lot of sense. Mm. I'm going to have to leave my turban behind, aren't I? That well, you could wear it underneath the robe's hood, but it would make your head look really big. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is unfortunately true. Uh, That's, Am I going to look out of place being a kid? Like, are there? Priests are the same size as me. Um, 
again, uh, Bailey, you think that maybe if, you know, there's always a chance you can just pull your, your, uh, you know, the robe up and how, how old is, how old is, uh, yeah, I guess I'm not like a, like a, I mean, I'm probably teenager. So right. yeah, I guess, I guess I could pass for like a small person, a small adult. Sure. Yeah, and if we take out one of those guards at some point, you could probably totally pass as one of the uh, one of the fanatical guards. All right. Well, I'll start um, making some, you know, under the table inquiries as to where I might find some quality purple cloth. Um. Anybody else going to assist with that? No, Ephraim will try because he remembers what the shade of purple was. Oh yeah. So you can point out. Bailey probably knows oh, a bunch yeah. of merchants at the bazaar or whatever, you know. Yeah, and he's the smoothest talking, the best looking That's of us. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you forget it. <laughs> now, Asher Ash, this will not fail. I'm sorry, Ashera, this will not fail. Uh, okay. but it it could get complicated. So I'd like you to make a let's let's call it a, a wisdom check. Okay. Let's stop. Um, so I'm looking for under a 14. I failed. Unless I have advantage from all the help from all my friends. Uh, you do have advantage. Since people are helping you out. Thank God. Okay. Let's try this one. Two. Yes. Success. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. It's going to cost your group. Uh, about 50 coin. All right. Um, but you can get robes that you think will fit your group excellent pretty 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 easily but as you as you do uh and as you're getting them back and you guys can figure out kind of improvisationally how that's gonna or you know kind of go uh coin wise but as you do come back, you hear a new tolling of the bells. It sounds a little bit more like the traditional tolling that doesn't go on too long, but it seems to resonate a little louder. And something about the key or the register of the notes seems a little off. It's almost, it's almost instead of being sort of minor key bell tolling, it's, it's got this sort of weird major key brightness to it kind of piercing out through the city it actually interrupts the tolling of the uh, chimes at the t at the temple of thoth huh uh and it's about sunset it sounds like we need to start moving that may indicate that they're um, they're proceeding with their timetable yeah mm -hmm. i agree all right well i'll kick in uh 20 coins um for the towards the uh the purple robes. All right, I'll I'll give you guys thirty. Oh, all right, now I'll kick in twenty. That should cover us, right? Oh yeah, we're way covered. We're good. All right, good because I only had one coin. <laughs> <laughs> now you got one coin and a beautiful purple robe. All right. Um, so now you heading over there. Um, At this point, yeah, and it was, um, it was Minoso that knew the way. Is that right? Uh, everybody kind of knows where the Hellbridge Temple main main door is. Uh, it was Minoso who knew that you could probably get there through the sewers. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, in fact, Aster Ash. What's wrong, sorry? You definitely knew they could get what there through, through the. Where's Riri? 
Pastor Ash, you definitely could get there through the sewers because you know that the Hellbridge Temple frequently dumps excess sacrifices out as ghouls and zombies into the goblin town uh, to sort of like just harass the goblins. You met them recently while trying to uh, convince the goblins to assist you. Uh, so you, you you knew also that you know that there's a there's a sewer connection, but you definitely can you know get in. Are you guys? What's the strategy for getting over there? Popping on your purple robes? Are you just kind of like kind of in the in the shade in the shadows of sunset, just sort of like getting close, getting the robes out, kind of putting them over your packs? And I I don't know. Do we do we want to put the robes on now, guys, or do we want to put them on when we're like? I was thinking we'd put them on as we after we had gotten through the sewers because honestly, robes. Uh, you, you know, yeah, yeah. I was going to say you don't you know. you don't have to go through the sewers with the robes. You could you could theoretically enter straight through the front door with the oh, robes. Oh, with the robes. I hadn't even yeah. thought about that. Yeah. So you can go. You know, that's that's your that's your option essentially. Do you want to? Do you still want to go through the sewers, or do you want to? Or do you want to just put on the robes and head in straight through the front door? Oh, it's so attractive. Is it a trap? Richard, look at me. Is it a trap? <laughs> Everything is a trap, Brian. Everything is a trap. There are no correct I answers. I was about to say, isn't this OSR? <laughs> Literally everything is trap. Uh, what do we do? <laughs> Let's go. Let's yeah, I, I think we have to go for it. It's getting time. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be sacrificing our friends here. Yeah, right. Let's go. Okay. We'll move on. Uh, okay. Robes on. Yeah. Yeah. We already spent the money for the robes all right all right um so you guys hustling through the streets in the robes uh correct and then uh heading up the main stairs um uh, yep and what are you kind of doing to uh, hide the fact that you have packs and weapons? We had bought especially bulky robes. <laughs> it's true. Um, we bought robes in, in Husky. Mine are already bulky on me, so I, that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> so let's start with Bailey. I'd like, ba and again, I'm using a fail forward system. Uh, for a lot of things, I, I put a, I put some extra details about that in the the document, which you can peruse at your uh, at your leisure. Uh, so, uh, anytime you fail a roll, you can ask me if you can just succeed at a cost. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes I may just inform you you're succeeding at a cost. Uh, so let's start with Bailey. Yeah. Uh, sort of what's your what's your strategy for getting this kind of bulky robe on your your teenage body? Um, and getting in there with your pack and your what, what weapons do you carry, Bailey? Um, I just have daggers, so it shouldn't yeah. be hard for me to hide those. So, um, and, I, and are, I, are you I taking are you taking other equipment besides the daggers with you? I, I mean, I don't have anything super bulky. I've got thieves' tools, which are concealed, the backpack, which I can leave, a lantern, which I don't need, flask of oil, I don't need. So, I mean, all this stuff is concealable because I'm a cut purse. I don't, I need to be right, mobile. Right. So, all my stuff is small, so that shouldn't be an issue. I just right. want to take my backpack and stuff. That's fine. I'm gonna italicize the things you've told me you're not taking with you, just yeah, so I don't try to. I don't try to take away. I don't try, don't try to take them away from you at that yeah. point. Uh, so you 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 are you are moving pretty light. Uh, Free and easy, as I say. Right. <laughs> uh, so you've just got your clothes, your daggers, your cut purse tools, and your throwing knives. Uh, all good things to have. Um, and uh, I'd like you I'll to. Tell you what, I want to. I want to take one flask of oil and my flint okay. and steel. That's not super big. Just in case I need a. I might need to light something on fire. You don't know. Yeah, that's a flask of oil. Never hurt anybody who wasn't doused in it. And you know, and I'll also take my cut purses tools. I figure those are just like sharp, like rain. I figure those in a. Yeah, those are just kind of go in a in a pouch on your belt. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. So Phil, yeah, you're still you're still sort of not into the you're you're not into the backpack territory. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, let's let's call this a simple charisma check. A pretty straightforward 
okay. simple charisma check just to kind of keep the hood on, uh, make sure that none of the guards sort of see you. Um, okay. And uh, we'll, we'll discuss the, the consequences of the check after we kind of circle around and have a talk to a few more people. So I'm trying to convince these people that I am a priest. As you're, well, as you're just slipping in, you know, Ephraim yeah. told you that it was just some, it was just some merchant. Right. So he's probably just a, you know, some sort of not even a priest, just some sort of like in the community initiate of the temple. Someone okay. pretty low level. But I'm, but I'm pretending to be a priest or I'm. Or right. yeah, just or like some initiate of the, of the temple. Okay. Somebody who can just sort of walk in and ha not have people look at you too hard. Okay. All right. So let's see. Mm. A lot of dice on this table here. All right. Let's see what happens. I don't even know what dice rolled. Um, can I clear some of these, or what are we doing with all these dice? I'm uh, trying to use the roll with a party thing. Or should I just roll? I have yeah, dice. Just, I just uh, grab one set and just roll your just one d twenty. Get rid of some of these dice. And you can you can uh, just kind of pull out the one you're using. Yeah, yeah, that'll be easier. Okay, so I'm going to use green. Okay. Do, 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 do. I failed. Okay. Although, do I have advantage because I have this thing that lets me roll with advantage on curve and checks to convince anyone who's not actively hostile to you? Yeah, actually, I, you do. Okay. So you can just roll a second green die. Oh, I didn't. Let me do this. Okay. No, failed again. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, and we'll talk about that in one second. Uh, and then uh, just kind of come back over to Minoso. Uh, Minoso, what are you taking in with you? Uh, well, the only thing I plan taking is my uh, uh, my staff, which I can, hope can uh, pass as a walking stick. Yeah. And as far as uh, getting in uh, surreptitiously, uh, it turns out that walking into temples wearing robes and uh, going about my business and looking completely innocent is my day job. So I'm hoping that will help me right. out here. Okay. Uh, why don't you roll it advantage then? Cool. Well, I like that. And is this a charisma check as well? Yep. And my charisma is 10. Oh, okay. Well, let's see how this goes. All right. Well, if I roll, whether I have to roll over and under, I've got it covered. Hey, you're, you're, rolling, under, you're rolling right? under. Yeah. yeah. Huh. You're rolling under. Not equal to, but under. Oh, I, I rolled a one. So. Oh, you rolled a one. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Esther Ash, kind of what's your, what's your strategy here? Well, I, I, I travel pretty light anyway. Uh, I just right. have a I just have a dagger, and um, I'll just ditch my my backpack and my my uh, my my clumsy adventuring gear, the lantern, the oil, and all that sort of stuff. And right. um, I'll just have my my lock picks, you know, and and a flint and steel tucked into my belt, and a, a wine skin with some wine because that's something that anybody might carry anywhere. Right, right, and, okay. Uh, you know, and, and a dagger, and so yeah, I'll just uh, put the robe on and. Walk in like I belong there. Awesome. Awesome. Um, make a charisma check. Okay. You want under a 10. Yep. And I roll a 19, it looks like. So that is not under a 10. All right. Um, and we will come back to that. Um, and Ephraim, you're a tall guy. You're a big guy. And you've got this big old beard um, that's a little scraggly. Um, Ephraim appreciates you, refer appreciates you referring to it as a big beard. Right, right. Well, I mean, I, I assume that like a lot of like a lot of nineteen-year-olds, like it's big in some areas, and 
not really all there in others. Uh, you also uh, appreciate you thinking he's 19. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, try to, I try to be as complimentary as possible. Uh, he's, so Ephraim, he's sort of leaving behind a lot of the – like he doesn't think he's going to need the sacks. Right. And uh, the backpacks uh, – the um, backpack, so the backpack's going to be a lot thinner than it normally would. So right. it's basically going to um, feel a little bit bulky, and he's uh, wearing sort of the shield underneath the backpack as he's going in. So that the back, so that if anyone touches his back, it's going to feel just like he's just a little bit husky back there. They won't feel right. like putting shield underneath their fingers uh, if they happen to clap him on the back or something like that. Um, okay. And uh, the the sword he's basically wearing at his hip. But he's buckled it a little bit high so that it it uh, won't uh, won't poke out from underneath the robes. And he's walking very carefully, almost like he's got a bum leg on that side, so that he right. can sword close to his leg. Okay, um, make that charisma check. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Ooh. All right, let's try it again. I don't think that worked. Let's, let me try this again. No, that did not work unless I have advantage on this. No, unless, you, unless you're going to use something to uh, get advantage for it. Uh, and I don't see anything that would really sort of work there. So yeah, I don't yeah, back I, to see what happens. If anything, I think I'm just sort of stuck with that. Um, and, and Ashera, what are you taking with you and what do you, so I want to, um, I would like to use some of my fortune telling skills, which is mostly misdirection. Uh, -huh. uh and, uh, I will, uh, actually, uh, tie my scimitar so that it hangs back uh, along my back. Um, right. I will take all my stuff um, and I will go in as a, uh, uh, you know, as if I've got a, uh, a hump on my back mm -hmm. um, so that, uh, you know, maybe that'll be realistic. I am uh, a pretty weird looking guy. So maybe the combination um, won't be too, too weird. And I'll of course use my staff as a, uh, as a walking stick and, uh, you know, talk to myself and whatnot as I'm, as I'm coming in. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll. All right. Can I uh, bring in fortune teller for advantage? Sure. All right. So you wanted that bolded and italicized. Right. Just then told me you already used it. So. All right. Probably a waste, but we shall see. All right. Um, so 2d 20, I'm looking for, I'm looking for basically eights is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Here. You're looking for eights or less. All right. 13 and 18. So that is a negative. All right. Worth a try though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just felt like, and I paid for all that stuff. I, <laughs> I should be able to bring it in. <laughs> so no one looks when the three, when the, the five of you enter, uh, though no one looks at you suspiciously, but a few people in the guard look at you askance as you were clearly coming in late and uh like i said the the vestibule is does have doors on it but they are they look like they're just perpetually open you know nobody ever closes the doors on the on the inside of the vestibule um so that uh you can just kind of walk in you see a bunch in the in the in the firelight inside um i'm gonna pull up a an image file i can give you a link to 
Um, just one second. Uh, but as you, you as you come up inside, the firelight um, from sconces on the wall and from the and from some fires on the altar. Uh, is uh is making everything inside seem pretty creepy uh, one second i'm going to give you this i'm going to use this file as sort of an image board uh it would help if google docs would not be slow um <clears throat> in the chat um but uh in the image in that in that google doc i just the image over on the the right side of the page you see um a whole bunch of purple robes just sort of clustered around um a big altar and the altar has sort of eight sort of spindly pillars coming towards a big dome that is shaped to look like an eye uh, that's sort of over an altar. Uh, so it's almost like a eight spider legs sort of holding up an eye uh, in that sort of rough drawn map. Uh, you'll see a bunch of dots. That's kind of roughly where the purple robes are standing. Uh, and around the altar are a bunch of red robes. Um, in the back are, are those guards I was telling you about, though as soon as they give you sort of a glare for being late, um, they turn away and, and look back at the front uh, like they're just sort of disgusted by people who run late um, and don't find you um, worth paying much more attention to. The, uh, the open doors onto the, uh, the temple itself from the vestibule are kind of in front of you. But you also notice there's two small doors to the left and to the right. Uh, you should sort of see on that sort of rough drawn map uh, there, uh, the one on the right is not showing up well. You can see this is a heavily detailed map with, with clearly t perfectly to scale. <laughs> uh, you can tell from the size of the vestibule that the, the, the temple itself is not as wide as the building is. So you can tell there's two wings there. Um, uh there's a bunch of purple robes there's more people in red robes sort of up on the altar and around it in the firelight uh the purple robes seem to just be droning while the red robes seem to be chanting in a language you don't really understand sort of over the drone of the everybody in the purple robes um and uh I'd like a uh, Bailey. Go ahead and make a wisdom check. Mm. Uh, for those of you who, for those of you who failed, I'd like you to uh, to know that you feel a deep chill. No one's really paying much attention to you, but you feel a deep, weird chill. Those of you who succeeded feel, you know, just like you you did when you when you use those of you who failed like of this deep chill as if something is watching you Ooh. in a cosmic sense, not in a, like the big eye is noticing you sense, but in a, in a dread, like the gods above or the gods below either one or, or have got their eye on you. All right. Yeah. Uh, no on the wisdom check. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. That uh, gives me two pluck. I forgot my pluck thing. So yeah. Two pluck, which is the most I can have. Okay. So good time to start spinning that pluck as you I think so. <laughs> um and uh, like I said, there's the door in front of you, and there's two doors to the sides. Where would you like to go? From sort of nods to uh the right. Um, and uh, there may be points at uh, 
two other folks and say, and then sort of points toward the left, maybe trying to investigate both sides and see if the either side of the temple is where they might be holding the prisoners before they take them out into the main area. The ever successful split the party method. I like it. It's one of my favorites. It always it always works perfectly. It, it, it is. It's never not worked. When people ask me what they can get me for GM's Day every year, I say just split the party. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite thing. Oh, so Ephraim has made a recommendation. With that's that said without irony. I love split parties. <laughs> that said without irony. Uh, so Ephraim has made a recommendation. What do the rest of you think? Yeah, I think I'm going to duck off to the right. That seems like a good place to start. Me too. Sure. Uh, who said me too? Sorry, I was looking Bailey. at the map. I said, oh, so Rory, uh, sorry, uh, Bailey, uh, Ashera, and who else were heading off to the right? Uh, Minoso. I, I will as well. I, I, I'm not okay. a fan of this. Splitting the party. So when I see a group of people headed towards the door, I'll just um, I'll follow along. Right. Okay. Yeah, it looks like there might be. If we can go in through here, if there's a door going, we'll call it north. There might be some like cells up there. Mm -hmm. um, That's kind of what we're looking for. So. Yeah, that could be good. Um. Oh, yeah. So everybody's going to the right? Uh, yeah, I think that's what we ended up doing. All right. Everyone just shrugs his shoulders and you know, holds the door open for everybody. Uh, I do think it's actually very good that you didn't listen to the guy with the seven wisdom when he talked about what the plan should be. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all head off to the right. You open the door. Um, and uh, who's in the lead there? I guess I am. I said I'd go there first. Okay, and who's sort of coming up? Who's bringing up the rear? The person uh, hold the door, I would think. Yeah, Ephraim was holding the door, so he's probably uh, coming in last. Okay. As you sort of open that door, Ephraim, and people start sliding in, uh, the drone that the people in the purple robes are making gets louder. Uh, and Ephraim, you see through the big open doors that the the guards who are in the temple, which is about 10 of them, including the th few who were glaring at you, uh, start banging the hilts of their swords on the columns that hold up the temple to sort of make a drumming sound. Um, as the drone gets louder, and it's, it's a very chaotic drumming sound. It's like not, it's not a structured rhythm. Uh, and the, the chant gets louder and starts to get, the chants start interrupting each other. Uh, and the bells that overhead start going off um, in, a, in a weird sort of chaotic pattern. Okay. Ephraim uh, pulls the door closed behind him and says, we better hurry. Uh, so yeah. Ephraim, you're seeing that outside. Ashera, followed by everybody else, you walk into this little room off the vestibule uh, and you see something that's clearly being prepared for procession into the temple, which is uh, Bailey's friend, young Ricky, ah. on a stretcher, um, sort of not moving, clearly breathing, but not moving um, in sort of a, you know, just sort of a white loincloth with flowers sort of scattered over him um, and sort of a, a cheap sort of costume crown on his head. Um, and you see, all of you can see and smell the yellow lotus powder, which is a, a very popular poison for knocking people out. 
uh, kind of a, a, a pretty a pretty common like knock somebody out poison uh, and you, you Bailey you even see um, a little a little bowl of the of the powder with with a, with a cup of wine sort of sitting on a side table and in this room are six people uh, six and they are all sort of dressed in loincloths somewhat somewhat similar to the one that that Ricky's wearing um, and they look like they're about to um, pick up the stretcher he's on and start proceeding into the temple. That's sort of like from the way they're positioned and pointed, that's uh, the way you sort of get a sense that's about to start like happening. Mm. Um, and uh, Bailey, you recognize the one closest to you as Yuri. Um, now you still have your hood on. You don't think Yuri can see you. Uh huh. Hmm. And you say, um, you said that I can see a bowl of the sleeping poison stuff. Yeah, yeah. You could like kind of look at past them, like on a windowsill, with a little thing of wine. You know, being a teenager, you have a good eye for drugs and and, and booze. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, you can find you can always find that um, and note where it is. Uh, oh. Whether whether you're the kind of teenager who would avoid it or the kind of teenager who would go for it, uh, you can always find it, uh, especially when it's just sort of sitting on a window on a windowsill. Uh, but you you suspect that's what they gave they gave Ricky. Uh, All right, I want to. Do I think I could sneak over to where the poison is? Uh, they've actually all turned to look at you since uh, oh. you've just opened the door uh, and come in. So there's there's a group of you purple robes coming in, and Yuri looks at you and says, Initiates, should you not be in the temple to receive the sacrifice? Go on about your business. I'm not going to wave at them. Make a charisma check just to kind of keep your voice under control there. Sure. Why the hell not? All right. Just to sound deep and and, and yeah. commanding. All right. So. All right. Now I got a two on a four. So I think I made that one. Awesome. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Oh. Um, and you see them shoulder. Uh, sort of like Ricky stretcher, almost like it's a funeral beer, and they start sort of doing a ritual dance in place as they're sort of waiting for some. They're clearly waiting for some signal uh, for the uh, from the temple itself. All right. um, Who, who's who's next to me in the room? Uh, I believe that uh, Ashera was the first one through. So let's say he's he's closest to you. Could Ashira pass as one of these guys holding the litter? Well, they are they are wearing just white loincloths, so there would oh, be a costume oh, change there. Oh, um, we could uh, maybe you could convince them that we can that we'll take the uh, the boy in. Um, yeah. Or we could just kill them all. Yeah, there is. Well, rather not do that. <laughs> There, are, um, there is there is a door to your right and to your left as you're as you're looking at this, like you've you've turned to the right from that main entrance way. Um, oh yeah, and uh, let me let me pull that up. Uh, and there is a window sort of right across from you. There's a door to your right and to your left. Uh, so they are. Uh, after being commanded by you, uh, Bailey, they are sort of back to doing their business. 
but Yuri seems to be kind of focused on those of you who are still standing in the doorway and like as he's dancing, uh, trying to shush you out of the out of the way. Hmm. Um. And what is it about can... him that you recognized after four or five years away? What is it about him that said, like, this is Yuri? Oh, he has this knife scar on his face. So it's, like, super obvious. Okay, yeah. Same color hair, same eyes. Yeah, I mean, but crop. that is unmistakable. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, all right. He's a lot less scrawny than he was when you knew him. Yeah. Well, we all are. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm going to whisper to a share. Listen, I'm going to go for that poison. So maybe distract them. All right. Yeah, the, the um, temple is getting noisy inside. So my intention is to knock them out with the poison or as many as I can. But I now mean, this is a to, this is an ingested poison. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. So, oh, come on. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure that uh you, you understood. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll have to improvise. <laughs> um I could try to put him to sleep. I have a spell. Oh, well, I have a spell. Um, spell is yeah. good. Why don't we give that a shot and we'll see uh, see what happens. Um, hopefully the noise of the, you know, the cacophonous noise from the main temple will, you know, um, slightly uh, camouflage uh, the weird hand gestures and uh, odd words that I say. And while he's doing that, I'm going to go for that poison. Though. I'm still going to try to pocket All it. All right. Um, uh, Ashera, roll 46. Okay. Go for high numbers. <laughs> All right. Three, three, four, six. Yuri... And the five people with him pass out on the ground. Yes. <laughs> in, in a heap. Um, and uh, you see Ricky's body kind of fall from their shoulders into the, onto the table. They pick him up. They, they, the stretcher sort of falls off their shoulders as they collapse uh, and just sort of lounds with a loud clap onto... Um, the table um, as a uh, wiki kind of like um, I get him off the stretcher uh, onto the stretcher uh, and you're easily across the room with that uh, Bailey and you've got a, you've got a, a pack or a, or, or a small sort of like like jar kind of brass brassy colored jar of this uh yellow lotus powder and there's a there's a chalice of wine that looks like it's mostly empty and then there's a bottle of wine right next to it um and uh who was going to get get ricky off the stretcher oh, sorry i was, uh, I was glancing over the map yeah Ephraim, and you were closing the door behind you yep um and ricky looks disoriented and profoundly groggy um i he, i i have motion to for him to shush and the the light is pretty low and he's like you know he's still acting like it's like someone shining a light directly in his eyes his eyes look pretty dilated when he blinks and then he, he closes them again and puts his elbow over and tries to roll over uh what are you trying to do with him basically just uh, getting him away from that area sit him down in a chair for a minute, let him try to get his bearings. I know he's been drugged, so. And uh, then look around and see what, um, if there are any other prisoners like in any of these other adjoining rooms. Uh, which one are you checking first? The ones to your, to your right or the ones to your left? Um, I'll check the ones to the right. Okay. First. One second, lost my. So, the ones to your right uh, are are joined by a door internally. 
Um, and you see Marid, who was the, the witch sort of turned political radical in Cooster, sort of tied up in there. Huh. Okay, it's, as soon as I see them, um, I like motion for somebody else, one of the other guys to come over, make sure and see if they reckon and uh, make sure that this is them. Because I only, I only know a little bit about them, but I want somebody that can actually confirm that this is really them. Uh, and you see sort of laid out in the little room kind of adjoining where that uh, they're actually tied up is, uh, you know, a couple of those loincloths like Ricky was wearing. And these are kind of a plain white. They're not the uh, they're not the kind of like embroidered white thing that the uh, the embroidered loincloths that the, the the six sleeping dancers are wearing. OK. All right. Um, does anybody come over after I motion for somebody to come over to help me verify that these are these are our people? Yeah, I'll, I'll verify uh, Mar Marid. And did I hear Cooster? Did I hear that right? Yeah. Sure, I'll, I'll step up as well. Yeah, yeah, they're Still both in. there. They've both been um, pretty roughed up. Hmm. And now you guys in purple robes are standing over them. Okay, I, I pull <laughs> out of my hood and, and make, a, make a motion for them to be quiet. Like the shush motion. Uh, yeah, and that's that when you pull the hood off, that is a, uh, and that is a uh, Ephraim, you know, you're more recognized around the neighborhood than you may know. Um, uh, it's the fat kid with the bad beard. <laughs> like, oh, it's the, it's that nice kid who, who occasionally beats up people for, for uh, in defense right. of the neighborhood yeah. or for money, whichever. <laughs> Uh, sure, better than an actual cultist. Um, so the, this, you, you, the, I think pulling your hood off actually for a second has uh, the the reverse effect, where they're like, they kind of they're they're like, Rawr! you know, being bound and gagged as they are. They can't really they can't really gesture or say anything, but they can they can say they can muffle they can say, they can do something muffled sort of loudly. Uh, Um, gotcha. Uh, and then, uh, oh, we've lost Rory. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he'll come back soon. His yeah. internet went down. So I am going to, Oh, I did not even. Guys, what are we going to do with all of our uh, newly released prisoners? Uh, we're going to run back out the front door with them. Um, is this everybody? No, I'm still missing someone. No, we've oh, got we've cool. got at least two more two more people to get. Yeah, um, but we haven't checked all these rooms yet. So, yeah, you know, we checked the other rooms. Uh and then there is. Oh, and and uh, sorry, um, Ashara. Make an intelligence check. You need to do that each time you cast a, an intelligence or wisdom check, depending on what you cast. But okay. uh, each time you cast a spell, to con confirm that you ca you keep the spell slot. That was intelligence. So that would be 15. The first time I've ever played a magic user on the black egg. That's cool. One. Yay. One. Awesome. All right, so I keep the spell then? You do, you do, you keep the spell. Or not the spell, but you keep the spell slot. Okay. You do not You do not feel exhausted by... Uh... Um... And then you hear a loud gong. And then the banging and the, the chaotic chanting and the drone suddenly stop. Uh oh. Yeah. They're like, uh, where's the sacrifice? I thought you brought the sacrifice. And a few seconds later, as you hear like a almost like a dramatic, like a ritual knocking at a door. Is it this door? Yeah, it's the door that Ephraim just closed. Like,
Um, <laughs> it might remind you of like a New Year ceremony where you're supposed to open a door to let the New Year in, uh, and the person the person who's sort of representing the New Year will will knock very dramatically at the door. Um, that seems to be sort of now, what's. Now now, the door that was knocked at, is that the one that we came into, like back from yes. the vestibule? That's the one you just closed that is back to the vestibule that you, you, carefully, you carefully closed behind you. Okay. We should, we should beat feet. Yeah, we've got to, uh, all right. Uh, he pulls his hood back, uh, Ephraim pulls his hood Ricky back, is steps still the door. Very Ricky is still very, very drugged. Yeah. Get those guys untied. Uh, Ephraim pulls his hood up and walks over to the door. Oh, um, I think I can, if we need to clear these guys' uh, heads up, I, I might be able to help with that. If we need to do what? Uh, do we need to, if we need to get these guys ungroggy in a hurry, I can help out with, I think I might be able to help out with that. Yeah, just the one guy, actually. Yeah, it's oh, just the one guy who's been drugged. Well, uh, why don't I uh, say a prayer over him and see if my, uh, one of oh, my awesome. spirits can, uh, let me see if I can apply the uh, good old physician spirit upon this person. Oh, the physician nice. spirit seems like an ideal. Yes, and I'm going to say it's the same thief god. He he just likes to steal diseases from time to time. Yeah, he had a very he had a very eclectic uh, following. He was kind of like a lot of people like to use him for like kind of cram this data into whatever cause they had, and that was part of why he you know, that may have been part of his downfall. <laughs> In any event, I'm going to roll my communion die. And yep. I don't want to roll a, is it a six or a one I don't want to roll? You just don't want to roll a one or a two. Oh, ooh, one or two. Then it, goes, then it steps down to four. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. I'll see if I, I will go ahead and ungragify him. For the power of thievery. Oh, I rolled a three. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he sort of coughs for a second very softly and then sort of looks up for you. I mean, he's still sort of dressed in that... Uh, he's unbound, but he's still sort of dressed in that uh, uh, weird white loincloth. Uh, he shakes the like one lingering bit of flower petals out of his hair, and he kind of looks around, sort of frantically at the at the. Do all of you have your hoods back? Yeah, no reason to wear them in here. Okay, yeah, then yeah, he recognizes you. Um, and then notices the knocking at the door, which happens again in the same sort of dramatic pattern that that sort of resonates a certain impatience. Yeah. Ephraim pulls up his hood and goes over to the door. All right. Uh, I... Is there a lock? You should lock it. There is a there is a there is a, something that we, you know you might be able to bar it with from the inside, not officially, but you could slip a one of those big heavy chairs that's near the door under it. Uh, Ephraim will, Ephraim will uh, do that um, first, and he says, "Check the other rooms." All right. Um, Ephraim, I'm going to have you make a strength check, but this is this is not to see if you get it right. It's just to see how long it will hold. Gotcha. Oh, I made it. You made it. All right. Um, you. Got it. Um, I'm using the purple dies on the awesome. uh, roll for your party. Just point that out. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, it is well wedged in there. Uh, and they start sort of quietly pushing at it. Mm. But uh, whatever you did got it wedged in pretty tightly, Ephraim. Um, and I want to take just to give Roy a chance to come back. Let us take a break until we get to nine forty-five, and we will pick up at that point okay. and figure out what you're doing with your three prisoners and how you are planning to get around. Cool. All right. See you soon. Cool.
Mike and Chris, as soon as you get back, get start. I'm back. All right. Chris, there was this real cool effect as you move your camera, like everything <laughs> went red on your, with your lighting. I love to say that was on purpose, that I had mastered getting text to that level, but no, it's just probably a malfunction right. camera. <laughs> so, or just uh, weird adjustments, auto automatic adjustments of uh, Google. All right. Uh, I don't see Rory back yet, so we'll just um, kind of integrate him, catch him up when he gets back. And kind of roll with it uh, because we've got about an hour. Okay. Um, and I'm getting some notification from Google, but okay. All right. Um, but not from Rory. So, okay. So they, they are clearly kind of like trying to, without draw attention to it, try to fidget with the door and then you hear some sort of sort of shoulder the door and it, it gives slightly but then it, it the chair sort of like the chair leg sort of clicks into a groove and a broken tile um, and sticks even more firmly than it was before um, you've still got these doors to the to the, the what was to the left of of where you came in you had looked yeah. at those small cells to the right uh the the left would be further in along the side of the temple let's take a look at those as fast okay. as we can yeah are we are we sort of like traveling as a group guys are we going to take our our freed hostages with us i mean i imagine we have to right otherwise they're just gonna yeah maybe they can help us in some way we'll try and you know find some clothes for Ricky too. There's probably at least one or two robes in here that those guys wear in the loincloths have taken off. So just tell them to grab one of those. Actually, there are not. Really? Dang. Yeah. Uh, we'll find something. You do see some hang hanging lanterns, some torches. Uh, uh, there he is. And there's Rory. <laughs> uh, Rory, they had uh, clearly intercepted a, uh, a high point in the ritual. Um, and you are back. Uh, and they intercepted a, a high point in the ritual and barricaded the door just before someone tried to come through to get the sacrifice. That person is now trying to, without making too much noise, uh, break the barricade, but the entire temple is silent. So it's not likely that your secret, uh, or the desire to not interrupt the ritual will 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 protect you for very long. Uh, you found two other people that you knew. Um, in addition to Ricky, you found uh, Marid and Kuster, both from the neighborhood. Uh, but uh, clearly, if you open that door, whoever is on the other side will see the uh, six sleeping dancers and the fact that you are not the dancers or the people who are supposed to bring the sacrifice out also that the sacrifice is up and moving around and awake uh and looks intent on not drinking any more wine uh you might see by the look in his eye um there is a door that leads further along the the right side of the temple without seeming to go into it uh that people are thinking about moving into what do you guys want to do? Now we'll say intuition says there probably aren't a lot of guards at the back right this moment. This is probably a small ritual escort. Okay, uh, let's check the, I want to check the other rooms right quick and see if there's anybody, uh, any other prisoners in those other little side rooms. Uh, yeah, the, 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 only other, the only other door you've not explored is that, that, uh, that, that other side room just kind of had like <clears throat> two tied up people and, and the effects of like preparing them for a sacrifice put on their put on their little like decorative crowns and their their white loincloths that was all that was in those two rooms that were to your right so you, you you've cleared out those the only other way you've not gone 
is up to your left. All right, let's run up. I want to uh, run up to the left and see if I can see what's in see what's in that area. See if we can find any of the other people. All right, uh, you open that door to the left, and the area mm -hmm. seems uh, empty. Okay, anything? Nothing in there at uh, all. There is a a little. There's like a table sort of in the middle of the room. Uh, it looks like it uh, is more for uh, work or discussion of some sort. Or for eating, perhaps even. Um, hmm. And then uh, there's, if you look at the illustration, uh, I keep remembering that there's an illustration. You'll see that there's like uh, there's a kind of what's like an inset little sub sub like area <clears throat> uh, mm -hmm. right in front of you past that table. Yeah, and I'm gonna and there seems to be a little hallway off to the right around that sort of inset area. Okay, I want to look around in there and look in each of those uh, little uh, cubbies, whatever I can get to, and see if any other uh, we can find any of the other uh, uh, prisoners. And who's going with you? I'll go with, just in case anyone else needs reviving. Yeah, I, okay. I will. Too. <clears throat> Is I'm Oslo. I'm Oslo. I'm going back, by the way. Uh, are you bringing your two prisoners with you as you move further into the complex? Yeah, I think we're trying to keep everybody together because when we when we make a move to get the hell out of here, everybody's going to need to move. Okay, you guys, you kind of got to move into those little cubbies, and as you move into the cubbies, um, you hear sort of off ahead of you somewhere to like further along the edge of the temple, you hear a door open and close and it's a big heavy door as if it comes off the main temple itself. Oh, damn it. uh, but it's not any, there's clearly nothing like that in these little cubby holes. Uh, and uh, I'd like everybody to make me a wisdom check and tell me who succeeds. Okay. I do not succeed. Not at all. Not even close. <laughs> <clears throat> Max succeeded. I got a one. Normally that's <sighs> terrible, but I succeeded. I failed. My best stats and I failed. I think something happens on a one, right? Uh in it, if there's something I can intensify, it does intensify. <laughs> oh, but uh, okay. There's really not much I can intensify right this moment. Um, can, you, can you intensify my internet connection with that? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no, I can't. This is the fourth uh, day in a row it's gone down, by the way. Just oh, no, uh, great. Yes, yeah. I have They're a lot of fun out. calling yeah. and yelling at people when it goes down, but I, I, I don't accomplish much. No. Uh, uh, as you move those cubbies, that back area is clearly some sort of office with lots and lots of scrolls sort of laid out with various ritual directions. Um, in that front off, that front area of the cubby is just sort of like a, a sitting area. The middle is sort of, sort of a, a small ritual area. And uh, you all notice that the grate in the floor is a jar. Um, and that there's a there's a grate in the floor, under part of the room. Uh, and then there's a small ladder under that grate that's a jar that's kind of shown up in the 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 lantern light. Um, this looks like a good place to go right now since somebody's trying to get in that back door. Um, the course of action is clear. The. Uh, the uh, lantern lights, or sort of the uh, the the uh, the grate is a little rusty red around the edges. Uh, you you suspect this may be a way of disposing of sacrificial victims uh, of some sort or other. Um, hmm. And you begin to hear outside that little hallway that's sort of along that outside of that, that group of three cubbies. Right. 
uh, you begin to hear somebody, uh, maybe two, three people walking by uh, as if they're about to move into the room you just came out of. Those of you who failed that wisdom check still notice the, the grate in the floor, but you also get a, a weird sense of that, that continuing sense of doom. Uh, like mm. you're just being watched by a creepy, strange force, and it's it's an intense. I really, uh, I really hate this temple, and I want us to get the hell out of it as quickly as possible. We need to find our last two guys and get the heck out of here. All right, going down into that now, you've got like lanterns and sconces, and sconces with torches in them all over this complex. Uh, going down in that hole is going to require some light. All right. Um... I'm going to light one of my torches. Okay. Um, and are you going first, or who's going first down into that hole? Uh, yeah, I'm holding the torch, so I'll uh, I'll head down first. And, and who's uh, moving that grate for you guys? Uh, it's probably going to be Ephraim, since he's the... Oh, yeah. I'll, I didn't even consider I'll that. Help. I'll help yeah. Ephraim. Okay. Uh, Ephraim, make a dexterity check with advantage because okay. you want to keep this quiet. Gotcha. Oh, I blew it both times at 18 and a 19. Oh, Ephraim, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's not good. You hear you hear a muttered sound from beyond that says like, "Hey, what was that?" <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like angry cultists. If I ever heard them before, I'm gonna stand. Uh, I'm gonna stand basically uh, after we've kind of gotten that open. I'm gonna stand next to the door so that uh, when they run in to investigate it, I'm gonna clout whoever comes in uh, really hard. Okay. Um, so Ephraim, you're kind of going to go last. Yes. All right. Um, Ephraim, uh, who's, who's going second to last there? I will. I'll, I'll bring up the river. Ashera, with them. Ashera got the, got the torch and is heading down in. Who, who, who said I will? Bailey? Was that? Aster, oh, Aster Ash. Yeah, so, oh, sorry. Well, Stay behind with that from to hold the rear. Okay. Ash, think, Ash. That is. I think uh, Minoso is going to be valor. second. Oops, sorry. I, I was going to say Asher Ash has a, a newfound valor. Uh, <laughs> uh, and you were you said you were going to second my yeah. Minoso. All That's right. right. Uh, and you're keeping the 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 three prisoners who don't have much in the way of equipment in the middle. That sounds like a good plan. Yep. Yeah, right. try to protect them. Uh, they sort of shuffle in much more slowly. Um, when uh, the door, which opens outward from where you are, uh, Escher starts to creep open. Um, and you were, you were going to be in place to sort of try to, to club somebody, weren't you? Yes. Definitely. All right. So Ephraim, go ahead and make that roll, uh, make a strength roll to see if you you get this person before they uh, cry out. Okay. Uh, do I get advantage on this one since he's unprepared? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, you get advantage on this one since he's unprepared. Hey, I made one of, one of my made. I rolled a three and a 19. Awesome. Uh, roll your damage. Would it, would it do him any good to get a one? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to use my two pluck to give him a one. Oh, nice. Oh. So I like distract the guy by like waving at him or something <laughs> as he's coming to the door. Hey guys. <laughs> you're, you're like, what are you gonna move? he's like, come, come over here, come over here. And he's like, <laughs> and then he gets clotheslined by the. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Do your damage twice there. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> I need to roll. Uh, 2d8. Yeah. 
and just add them together. Okay, at a seven and a one for a total of eight. He doesn't say anything before your sword goes straight. You were attacking with a sword, right? <clears throat> yes, basically you know, putting him into silent mode as quickly as possible. <laughs> uh, before uh, you uh, run straight through his chest, uh, and he sort of falls off the back of your sword, and, and behind him, not turning to look at you quite yet, Ephraim, you see so, at least one of his companions detaching the uh, the uh, door from the or detaching the the uh, the chair you had wedged so perfectly in place uh, okay. inside that other room, uh, and uh, what do you do? Um, Ephraim is going to take his second attack to uh, throw his sword straight at that guy to try and All stop right. before he gets that chair uh, loosened enough for them to force their way in. Make a dexterity check. This time just for, just flat out regular. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was going to throw my knife at this guy, but we'll see how you do. I miss. Okay. Um, you miss. But he turns to look at your sword. Uh, you were going to throw a knife? Yeah. I have a set of throwing okay. knives. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. So let me do that. That is a 13 out of 16. So. Um. Both both fail. No, no. Oh, I have one a sixteen. Of, one, got a sixteen. Awesome. No, I have. A, I rolled a thirteen. I have a sixteen oh. dex, so that means okay, I hit. Right? Sorry, sorry. Thirteen of yeah. sixteen. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, roll your damage. All right, my damage is okay. First time I've actually done damage, so I have to look. <laughs> um, okay. He takes two damage. He takes two. Do you have a brace of throwing knives? Yes. I think the way that you described it at the end of the encounter or something, I roll to see if I how many I have left. Oh, you can usage roll die. that now. You can roll your usage die now. Okay. Add your usage die to the damage. Okay. But if it goes down past D4, you're out of throwing knives. Oh, well, then I'm out. So I roll a one. So I mean, that'd be three damage. <laughs> okay. Um,. What what did and you guys start at? Was it a D D four or a D six? D six. So it goes down to a D four. So you you still got some knives left. But... Oh, oh oh oh! I thought if I rolled below a four, it went away. I see your stuff. No no yeah yeah. So if you if it goes to a D four, uh, okay. that you only have a D four supply, and then if you have a, a one or if you roll a one or two and a D four, then it goes down to nothing. Gotcha. Okay okay. So, um, all right yeah, your knife goes in. He turns to a, or, or scrape, you know, kind of gouges his shoulder before bouncing off, uh, releasing a little bit of blood. Uh, and uh, the door comes open, and um, a group of a group of those fanatic guards start kind of coming into the room. Uh, I think at this point, let's roll initiative for the three of you who are up there. Just see if you get over or under your dexterity. Okay. This is bad, guys. We should think about. We should think about jumping down the hole. Well, I beat my dexterity by twelve, so I think I. Hey, I actually beat my dexterity by three. Amazingly. Nice. How are you doing there, Asrash? I rolled a two under a sixteen, so I'm. I am. You guys can easily either attack them or get down that hole. I mean, I'd rather attack them to be honest. <laughs> How many are there? Yeah, there's uh, at least there's at least five. 
but you get the sense that there is more once the cry goes up there's more people coming in let's take care of the guys that are immediately here and then escape uh you can do that now bailey what do you want to do um so if one gets close enough i'll just stab him with my dagger uh you you he's not close enough you'll have to run into the other room or throw the dagger um i'll throw my dagger okay that's a dex check yep I'm just clearing out my dice here so I don't get confused. All right. Yes, that is a three. I believe that hits. That's a hit. Nice. Yes. So damage is six damage. That's oh. solid. Wow, right in the eyeball. And then do I add my gut roll my go, Were you going for were you were you going for the uh the red robe priest or were you going for the uh the, the guards who were coming in? Um, priest, probably, he might be scary, so I'll, I'll attack him. Yeah, yeah. So you threw that dagger. It stuck right into him. You do not need to roll your usage die unless you're adding damage and you don't need to add damage. So Okay, okay, cool. All right. Um, it's a rule I borrowed from a different game, but I've always kind of liked the way it plays with the usage no, die. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Um, yeah. um, and then... Uh, So Bailey is standing and fighting. You can move to the. Uh, you can move to that ladder, Bailey. Um, you can also kind of tumble, jump in, but you'll need to make a dex check to sort of keep track of you know keep track of where you are. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Anytime you tell me to make a dex check, I'm going to do it. All right. <laughs> this means you're going into the. You're going into that little tunnel. Rather yeah, than fine. standing. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that's, that's fine. Just wanted to make yep. sure. Yep. I got a 10, so I'm good. So yeah, you killed the priest. There's a bunch of guards still coming towards everybody. Um, at least five of them. Okay. Is that table still in that room, kind of in between where the guards are coming in and where where uh where we are? Yeah. Um Ephraim's gonna basically charge straight at that table, lift it, and uh basically use it to basically bash the guards uh back out that door. Okay. Do you want to block their entrance to the area you're in, or do you want to hit them for damage? Um, I want to. I'm not necessarily trying to damage them because I don't think it would damage them, but I'm definitely trying to basically knock a few of them down so that they can't come after us. Okay. Quickly. Uh, do that. Okay. Um, would that be a strength roll? Make it a strength roll. Okay. Oh God, missed it. Okay. You've got it up there, but you're not sure how long it will hold. Um, and you've got it wedged into place. You're not sure how long it is hold. Ash or Ash, are you heading down to the hole? If that's all you do, you don't really need to make a dex trick or anything. If you try to do something else, though. Oh, I don't want to abandon Ephraim, but I don't want to try and fight all these guys either. Um, yeah. <clears throat> well, it looks like Ephraim has blocked the door with that table. Um, yeah. It looks like you might have wanted to do something else with it, but right now the door's blocked. So there aren't even any enemies in the room right now, right? Nope. So Ephraim, we're getting out of here, right? Go. Great. All right. I'll 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 go down the ladder. Look at he split. All right, you are you are down the ladder. Uh Ephraim. Yes. Are you moving are you moving back to be close to that hole? Yes. All right. And then as soon as he gets over there and uh, thinks he can get down without uh, without basically falling, he's going to basically go down the ladder as quickly as he can. Because everybody else is now down the ladder, right? Yeah. So they on their turns, they bash at that door. It holds for a while. You know, the third one that kicks it, it starts to, or the second one that kicks it, it starts to move, and the third one, it moves even more. You think they're going to have that big, heavy, sort of wood chopping block table out of the way in no short time. It's your turn. Do you want to head down the ladder? Um, I want to uh, head down the head uh, head down the ladder and uh, and just uh, and go and pull the grate back over as much as I can, just to add one more extra thing to slow them down. Nice. Okay. Good job, guys. 
We're still at least, I think, two get two uh two victims short. I don't know where they were. Yeah, missing my mentor. Um, and, and I think there was somebody else too. Missing Bill the shopkeeper. Oh yeah. Bill, yeah. Did we uh, somehow get the evil eye of Mordor or whatever? I, I might have missed that part. <laughs> no. No. Oh, no. Some, of us, some of us feel its baleful gaze, but. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, wasn't that the whole point of this? <laughs> Was to get that thing? Well, we're trying to get our uh, our people out. Gotcha. Okay. If we happen to come across it, like if it, if it happens to be like, you know, the size of a bread box, that would be amazing. We'll just grab it and go. Yeah. Ephraim. Yes. The last thing you hear is an evil low voice just going, just use one of the dancers. Oh, what does that mean? Oh. Before you before you before you head down. Uh, all of you are climbing on this ladder for some time. Oh dear. Um, yeah, this is a terrible place. <laughs> You get a sense that you're passing um, some sort of underground stream or there's definitely a block of rock that is, is sweaty and dripping uh, and has a kind of trickle coming off of it uh, that you're passing. You're either passing some sort of stream or some sort of um, reservoir or something that somebody has uh, got water running through, and you can hear the water trickling, um, at least trickling. Um, you're, you're not sure how distant you're hearing the water from. And the, and I think we lost Rory again. Um, Actually, we lost Michael this time. Oh, oh, no, we didn't. We lost Michael. I'm here. I'm just muted. Oh, he's okay. back. Gotcha. Sorry, I saw right. a loss. That's okay. <laughs> I have, I, I've had that happen. It wasn't even my internet service provider's fault. Um, uh, and, and you, you go past that, uh, and you're still on the ladder, um, kind of going one by one, very slowly. You begin to get a little tired, um, and I'd like everybody to make a Constitution saving throw, or just make a Constitution check. All right. The Constitution stays. I rolled a seven, so I actually made that. And those of you who failed that wisdom check and had that second sort of creepy instance of the eye, you're at disadvantage for this. Oh, that oh. Not bad. all right. Let me roll again. Well, then I super failed. <laughs> super failed. Oh, man. I mean, I already failed, so I can't do worse, but I didn't get a 20 at least, but. Yep, I rolled a uh, 19 on the second roll, so I failed it. Um, it's not I like anything it. goes wrong, but you're beginning just to get sort of wear and tear and cramps in your muscles. Uh, you're going to take three points of damage <gasps> just from just exhaustion. Okay. Uh, from this long, long climb, having to carefully brace yourself um and eventually ashara gets to the bottom um and normally this would happen when the light goes out uh but ashara it's going to happen because you've got light um it's not as smelly as you expected ashara Maybe there's something they, some way they treat the sacrificial, the sacrificial victims, or Ugh. some preservative they use. But you are surrounded by bodies. Oh God! Uh, just as, just in this sort of like sewage tunnel, um, that's kind of wet on the floor, and you are just surrounded by bodies. I'd like you to make a wisdom check. All right. Uh, 
I rolled a 14 and my wisdom is 14. So I think I failed. I'd like you to roll a d6, sir. All right. So close. Two. Two? Yeah. So the rest of you come down and in the light, you see what Ashera saw. Um, but Ashera is just sort of rooted in place looking at this. Um, and who was, I think it was Minoso who was right behind Ashera. That's right. Minoso, I'd like you to kind of make a wisdom check. Okay. Oh, I succeeded. Roll to four. Nice. Nice. Minoso, you see... Ashera just standing there wide-eyed as everybody else just sort of scuffles down the ladder into this sort of body-filled tunnel. Uh, you notice that you don't know anybody here, which is good news. <laughs> uh, for, for you, uh, at least. Um, but then you notice that several of them are moving. Whoa. Mm -hmm. um, Given that I think my, uh, I think I would be compelled to want to check to make sure they're. Um, I mean, my his first assumption, innocent assumption would be not that they're not that they're undead creatures. They're ready to eat us and convert us, but that they may have uh, somehow managed to survive. Like they, maybe they played possum and uh, managed to survive at this. Um, oh, with that wisdom check, with that very good. Oh, wisdom yes. check, you, uh -huh. you know that these are dead bodies. Oh, okay. Uh. Scratch, scratch that, uh, scratch that glimmer <laughs> of hope. Belay that hope. Uh, the the rattling moan escaping their chest is not something that's made that's made by a living person unless they're trying to convince you they're dead. <laughs> well, oh, that I can't, I can't I can't see the upside to that that kind of subterfuge. So I'm gonna assume that uh, that these are horrible. Uh, and also the these sort of like empty, lifeless eye sockets. Uh, and 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 withered flesh on them would would and the fact that they were laying in water, Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. sewer water, sewer water uh, um, mm. would suggest would suggest deadness to you. Uh, you can do one thing before we roll for initiative, sir. Oh uh, well, I'll give I'll give the now since I'm the only one who knows is that I, I guess I should yell a warning so that no one else gets a gets a surprise attack on them. Right. So. Yeah, so I'll just uh, proclaim that uh, walk, corpse walk. There, there. Uh, the dead are the dead walk. The, you know, I'll just play the dead walk, just like that. And uh, <laughs> and there's one right next to you. Do you want Ooh. to try to push it away, smite it, do something? Yeah, I'll definitely whack it with my uh, uh, with my with uh, my. What do I have? Oh, I'm carrying a staff. <clears throat> so yeah, you're carrying I'll a staff. Uh, All right, and. Uh, so make that strength roll. Oh, that's right. It's a strength roll. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, I got a seven. Nice. You smite it. Are you going to use your smite power, or do you just want to do your base damage? You know, the, now the smite power, it, the, the uh, die roll is in, in replace, right? It's not, it doesn't, you don't, I don't add it to my regular damage roll. Is that correct? Yeah. It, in other words, it takes the, it's, it's a new one, but it also allows you to add your, add your level. Okay, so uh, so basically, I'm going for a D4 or D6 plus one, right? Or D6 plus two, D6 plus two, right? Uh, that's not so bad. I'll give it a whirl. Sure, I might as well. I might as well. Got powers. I might as well use them. Yeah. Right. All right, and I don't want to roll one or two. We've got thirty minutes left. Oh, and I did. So anyway, I I did four damage, and I now go down to a D4. <laughs> uh. What does your smite look like? Does it manifest as like an elemental force? Is it does it does it leave a loud clap? Uh, this god of thieves, what is it? You know, I think I, I think maybe you see like a just a 
a, a blink so quickly you might miss it. Uh, but like maybe just it's the ethereal da- hand holding an ethereal dagger just like momentarily appears and backstabs while I attack. Nice. Right. <laughs> uh, that zombie is you crush its skull and it just stops oh, moving. Fantastic. Beautiful. Uh, but now seven of them are standing up and all of you go. Let's roll for initiative. Mm. And how do initiative work? How does that work? Uh, just, just make a, a dex check and tell me whether you oh, get over or under dex your dex. Everything's uh, ability checks in this game. Ooh, yeah. I got under. Okay. Rolled a natural 20. That's oh. That's really bad, right? That is not good. No. <laughs> Made it. I, I made it only by two, if that matters. I don't know. Nope. These are these are mere meager zombies. Okay. Oh, it's like, do you go before or after them? Is that how it works? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. I made it, Rich. All right. Who who did not make it? Me, Ephraim. Uh, yeah. Well, you know. He he really uh, didn't make it. He, what it, what happened was he he started to reach for his sword and then he realized shit I threw it at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's rough. I'm sorry. Uh, Ephraim, um, you're sort of overwhelmed for a second by the 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 dead sort of raising up uh, and moving towards you guys. The three prisoners you'd brought with you just sort of surge forward and go running down the tunnel. Like there's, there's really only one direction this tunnel leads. Mm. Um, actually, no, there's two direct. I'd, I'd like to take that back. Yeah, there's two directions. I bet there's uh, only one direction right from the zombies, though. Yeah. And they... Uh, <laughs> They go running up a set of stairs out of the, uh, out of the uh, sort of the sewer water, the just sort of narrow set of stairs climbing along the wall of the sewer. Um, that seem to like take some people back up away from where you were, and then there's a tunnel sort of leading past where the zombies are. Uh, everybody but Ephraim, what are you doing? I'm not a big fan of zombies. I'll be honest. Uh, I think I will run away from them. <laughs> Let's yeah. see. Uh, Bailey, which direction are you running? Back through the tunnel or back up the uh, the stairs where your prisoners were? Uh, escape wherever that is outside. Yeah, that's it's kind of hard. There's not a there's not well, a, not, a, not back the way we came. Whatever that is. Yeah, there's there's direct ladder direct up. There's stairs going sort of away from you. And then there's the tunnel seems to go past where the bodies are, um, and sadly there's not a there's not an exit sign. Um, do we know where the exit. stairs go? Any idea? You do not. I'm gonna go the they stairs. Go out of the sewer water. All right, stairs. Um, all right. Um, yeah, you can get pretty far up the stairs along with the companions you gave by just kind of dashing past the zombies. Uh, is it dark? It is pretty dark. What are you doing for light there? Do I see any torches on the walls or anything? There aren't. Can oh, here's what I'll do. I will take off my. If you get to the glimmering edge. You see the the companions ahead of you just sort of stop, afraid to sort of like keep running forward into the dark. Okay, so I'm gonna take off my robe. Yeah, I don't need any more, right? And I'm gonna like, I'm gonna rip it. And make like a makeshift torch out of it because I have my flint and steel and I have oil, so I'll just spend a few moments doing that. Good, good, good. Yeah, I won't make you make any checks for that or anything. Uh, and uh, yeah, so you've got a second thing there, and you guys can start. They start moving ahead further. You've you've taken a second to sort of put that together. Uh, I'm gonna give one of them the torch so they don't procure it. <laughs> yeah, 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 awesome. Just in case. <laughs> uh, just for pluck purposes, make an intelligence check with that. Okay. I think my int's okay. I mean, look, int is, yeah, I'm 14. Shit. Okay. Yeah, let's see how I do here. <clears throat> no, I got a 20. 
You uh, you get it working, but you burn your hand. Okay. You're gonna take three points of damage before you kind of get the, before you kind of uh, the burning oil sort of slashes over onto you as you try to get the, the robe okay. further down in. Uh, or maybe the oil is slashed onto you, and when you light it, it actually lights onto your hand before you're able to beat it out. Oh, uh, man. You're moving so fast. So you've, you've got an oil burn on, on your left hand. Okay. Um, and it's throbbing. You've taken three damage. You're a little behind the escaping, but they're, they're standing at the, you know, they're, they're keeping you within the edge of the light. And you can see these stairs go up to where you saw the dripping rock. They're going to go in a weird angle around it. Uh, and then uh, let's call an Asher Ash. Then Ashera, the Minoso, and then the zombies. Okay. So, well, Bailey's run off, which is what I'm inclined to do too, but I don't want to leave anybody behind. And, <clears throat> and Ephraim looks a little bewildered. Um, and you destroyed one of the zombies, right? Yeah. Minoso did. So there's six left. There's other bodies down here, too. Oh, dear. Yes, then I think I will flee. Ephraim, you're a valiant man. <laughs> uh, you, I'll, not, I'll hoist a flag in your honor. <laughs> you've not used the better part of valor. I would, I would, th this may be a good place to get a uh, advantage on getting past these zombies and up those stairs. Uh, yeah, if that's what I need to do, then that's exactly what I will do. You've got a dex check. Ah, Music. let's say you were, you were for the zombie purposes, you were closer than Bailey was. All right, so I rolled a one. You do oh, you want to just. Make a other make another make a strength check really quick just to see how this goes. All right. Now I missed the strength check. Okay. Uh you see what you think is a golden opportunity. Uh as you zoom past this zombie and it hasn't turned around to look at you yet, and you have your you have your dagger out, uh, and you can just gut it. Uh and then uh it sort of pauses sooner than you thought it would to try to turn and look at you and sort of at sort of a weird angle. And you end up, you don't get your dagger in before your elbow collides with the zombie. Uh, and it <coughs> sort of like propels you past it and it propels it stumbling a little past you. Um, but you don't get a, you had a golden opportunity there to just kind of stab it. Uh, but uh, it, it it just turned into kind of a little bit of a mess, and you're you're scrambling up the stairs. Um, let's do Ashera, and then uh, Minoso. Ashera, what are you up to? Um, I'm going to. Zombies uh, do not fall asleep. No, no, they're not so easily. Uh... Uh, I'm sorry. Can I just a sec? Did, did he take damage from that, or he just? Whatever? No, no, he just kind of stumbled forward. Okay, okay, gotcha. Um, I'd like to, uh, I'm not sure how this works, but I, what I'd like to do is I'd like to, uh, grab, um, Ephraim and, uh, you know, oh, wait, like, wait, wait, I'm sorry, 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 Ashera, yeah. you're, you're frozen in place. Oh, I am. Which I forgot. I am sorry. That's all right. I wasn't, I wasn't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're not, you're not going anywhere. You're, you're just in shock. Oh man. I had big plans for this round. <laughs> That's the way it goes. All right. I am in shock. True. You are in shock. Uh, Minoso. So we've got um, someone in shock and Ephraim. He, he's, he's dazed in some, in some capacity. Is that correct? Yeah, he's, he's moving pretty slow. He, he looks like he's reaching for his sword, which is not there. Uh, he is aware of his surroundings, unlike okay. Ashera. Right. Well, <laughs> and Ashera is the person I'll be uh, attending to. I'm gonna right. see if I can uh, call upon uh, call upon my uh, my my secret deity to. Uh... 
Now you only have a D four of communion left, correct? Correct. So now if I roll one or two, will it still work? Uh, it will still work. I'll just be zapped out. You'll just be zapped out until you make a blood sacrifice. Oh, well, <laughs> is that all? That's all that's needed. <laughs> Which one of these prisoners wasn't one of my connections? <laughs> all right. right. Let's see what I has here. to be a willing, has to be a willing blood sacrifice. What? Uh, oh, okay. We got that yellow powder. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Twice for no. Okay, uh, I'm rolling up, I'm rolling off the table, back on the table, and phew, I rolled a three. Nice. Okay, uh, Ashera, you can act. Uh, you can also move to the base of the stairs. Um, you can move to the base of the stairs. That'll still give the zombies a little bit of a target there, Minoso. Um, unless you want to make a dexterity check. If you want to get up the stairs, you're going to need to make a dexterity check to sort of dodge away from them. But if you don't want to move cautiously without making a check, you can uh, you can sort of weave between them and get to the base of the stairs. Or you can go, you know, dodging down a tunnel completely separately from your allies. That's you, Mike. But also, sorry. That's right. you. Okay, so I, I uh, oh, so I've still got uh, time to act. Yeah, so, you, can, you can still move. Yeah, I, I, sh I want to just want to make sure um, Ephraim's okay. Uh, Ashera is Ephraim. Ashera is the one you you woke up. Ephraim, right. is, Ephraim, moving, Ephraim's just moving slow. Okay, there's not much well, you can do about it. Oh, really? Oh, okay, I was hoping that yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe he was just under a sluggish effect. He's no, just, no, uh, he's just he's just sort of like went for the sword at the when he when he should have gone for something else. Ah, I got you. Oh, I see. So anyway, uh, in that case, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'll just continue. I'll just head for the stairs too, but I, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to stand side by side with Ephraim um, and I don't want to leave him behind. Okay. Can I, can I do that and just, uh, just watch yeah. his back while he's, while we're both withdrawing, even at, at a slow, slow pace. Ashera, what are you doing? You're awake. All right. Um, yeah. I would, I'm going to try to, um, once I realize what's going on, uh, I think this is a good time to use my bond with uh, Ephraim and try and uh, um, can I, I grab him and try to yeah. get him to go up the stairs? That is going to be a strength check. Okay, not my strongest quality, but uh, with it with advantage, all things are possible. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Oops. I got a four. Made it. Nice. Okay. So that gets. Um, you've got a four. Um, awesome. Uh, you've got Ephraim. You sort of like pull him along towards oh. the stairs and start heading up the stairs. Uh, Ashera, do you want to finish? Or sorry, not Ashera. Minoso, sorry. Uh. Do you want to make a dex check and see if you can get up the stairs? Now that that now. Moving? Okay. Sure. I failed that one. Um, All right. Uh, I'm going to say that you get partial, partially up the stairs. Um, and you, you, everybody else is a little bit ahead of you. It's almost over, I think. Okay, well. Um, um, everybody else is a little is a little ahead of you. Uh, so one of the zombies, they move pretty slow, is still going to get in and try to, like, swipe at you. Uh, they don't really have, they're not ghouls. They don't have claws or teeth or anything like that. They just sort of, like, sort of, like, put all their body weight into, like, just clubbing you with their arms. Ooh. Um I'd like you to make a strength check to sort of push back on it. Okay. To defend yourself. Can I push back with kindness and duty? <laughs> uh, no, you can't. No, so. <laughs> uh, well, actually, you're standing your ground. You're 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 keeping the rear. I think actually you you could get away with that. <laughs> let's let's see if uh, I, I can I see if I need it first. <laughs> you also have the high ground, so I think that's a. Oh, well, do you win? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Ayel Minoso, offer them coffee. I chopped the legs off. Ooh, I rolled an eight. Okay. <laughs> I made I made this. I made the roll. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Good roll. Awesome. Yeah, you're able <laughs> you to sort of like push him back with your foot as you scramble up the stairs. And a few of them start moving towards the stairs for you. They, they, they're not good with stairs. Uh, <laughs> a few of them just start like kind of reaching for the stairs in a, in a hopeless attempt to pull themselves up. Uh, but, you know, zombies don't really have a good climbing skill. Uh, <laughs> uh, and you guys keep surging upwards towards the stairs. The stairs sort of lead to sort of a, a small, narrow kind of ledge path um, where you have to kind of go single file. Um, and then it leads what looks like into a like a, a broken crack of like poured concrete and stone. And uh, you see some iconography, Minoso, that suggests to all of you Odin. Oh. That after traveling for a weird zigzag pattern, you've you've for you know for about 10 minutes, you've you're you're now somewhere in a sub-basement of the temple of Odin. That's good news. We're across the street, right? Was there was there an Odin temple across the street from the yeah. Hellbridge? Yeah, there there was the, the Temple of Odin and Hamarcus, the, the the where you work, and then uh, Thoth all across from the Temple of Hel the, the Hellbridge Temple. Oh, I didn't realize they were that close. Yeah, definitely, definitely ditch the purple robes now, or just stick them in my backpack. Yeah, although although we do have to go back, of course. Yeah, we do have to go back. I'm still missing people. However, it is we are seven minutes from time. Oh, okay. <laughs> <make it. laughs> uh, so I'm over. going to ask each of you. Uh, You can try to talk your way up through the Temple of Odin. You can try to come out the sewer somewhere else. Uh, you can try to go back in and rescue people. Um, or you can uh, otherwise, or you can describe something else you'd like to do. Uh, but there will be just one thing. And I will, I will give you an ability check to see how that goes. Hmm. Um, and uh, we'll start with Minoso, who knows where he is before anyone else does. Right. Well, make sure everyone knows that the, we're in the Temple of Odin. And uh, oh, now you do have now, three survivors. Yes, we do have three survivors, and uh, including and uh, and the survivors I knew are all here. Or I think um, Kuster was the Kuster one you were closest to. You know, everybody right. knew of everybody else. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying that not, the other people aren't worth it or anything. But right, uh, right. yeah, actually, I'm going to say that now. Now, this this sacrifice is like theologically legal. Am I correct? There's is, really no. It is legal. Yeah. Theologically that's correct would be a different question, but it is legal. Uh, it is sanctioned. Uh, can, uh, as a representative of the Temple of Death. Could I make a argument that it would be within the interests of the people of the Temple of Odin? And I imagine our temples would be kind of close. We, we, you know, we're the Temple of Death or the Temple of War. You know, war and death kind of go hand in hand. You know, we give them a lot. You know, they, we we take a lot of their business, as it were. Uh, is there any way that um, I could convince them that this that they're that uh, that this impending sacrifices somehow uh, dogmatically improper and that they should intervene. Make a charisma check. Okay. And kindness and duty. Can I make, try to take my, uh, my, Oh my yeah. Minutes? Yeah. All right. And my charisma is 10. Oh, once again, the phone. Let's see what happens here. Hey, I, Oh, I wrote, I got a four and a six. Wow. You okay. got a double success. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> You recognize some of the, sh the the street patrol that sort of wander around the Temple of Odin. He doesn't so much have priests as just sort of ritualistic, uh, frenzied berserkers. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, who uh, may also be street drunks during the day. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, they they may also come from wealthy families and have a little bit too much time on their hands. Right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they are not fully sober. Uh, and uh, you've got a group of at least 10 storming back off through the sewers who swear they know how to get into Hellbridge Temple and cause some, cause some ruckus. Uh, and they are storming back off into the sewers in the dark. Oh, okay. Uh, just sort of screaming. <laughs> and, and chanting to Odin. Uh, it's like there's about ten hooligans. <laughs> wow, religious war enabled. Great. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know if I get to describe anything else from here, but um, if if I can still do something for the, sure. uh, I would like to like sneak behind in their in the wake of their chaos and hopefully find uh, our, our remaining um, stolen friends. <laughs> All right, that is uh, you. You may do that. Uh, coming back around to um, Ephraim. What's the last action you'd like to take? Well, <clears throat> Ephraim's hoping to capitalize on the chaos that was created when we botched their sacrifice and uh, basically uh, run back into the temple and see if he can find uh, the remaining two. Okay. And he will uh, throw the purple robes back on and basically be uh, trying to find those last two individuals. Ephraim, make a charisma check. Charisma, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I use my uh, troubled uh, trouble with the heart of heart of gold? Certainly. Oh, and also, Minosa is going, so you could use either one of those. So I'm going to try. Well, hmm. we'll try the Minoso thing first. Um, and you can only use one per roll, but oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that gives me advantage on it, correct? Yep. Okay. All right. Here it goes. A one and a two. Nice. Yes. Nice. <laughs> My thief god really. That I mean, thief god was really fond of you, man. That's all. That's pretty <laughs> awesome. You must be like some some. No, he wants he wants to go making. and steal the sacrifices from the other gods because he's. Right. All right. <laughs> That's just what he needs. Just needs one good sacrifice to get him back on his feet. <laughs> Asher Ash. Get well. That's right. What's yes. the last section you're going to take? No, no, this is Asher Ash. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was doing so well. So yeah, I think I think that um, all of this frontal assault stuff is just is not working out. I do I do want to try and do what I can to liberate the last two folks, but I'm also there not. To, there are at least three, and it, you know, and that's not counting the people taken from the guild. Right, right, and 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 one of those is is my friend, right? Is still right, yeah. Right. So I think that um, what I'll actually do is is I'll I'll tell the the other folks that you know, look, I I, I work really well like from the shadows. Let me try and sneak in there unseen and and scout it out, and then I'll come back and tell you where you need to go. If you're going to try to run in there in the middle of all this, you know, this chaos and try to break them out, that way you're not running around in there blind. And I'll, pretty good. I'll try to, I'll try to, um, I don't want to go back down past the zombies. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go looking for, a, maybe I'll try the plan we tried originally. I'll just try to, that we discussed originally. I'll, I'll just try to find another entrance into the temple somewhere that I can slip in unseen. Pick a wisdom check. A wisdom check. You right bastard. <laughs> you know, my wisdom's not terrible. And I rolled a three under a 13. Nice, nice. All right. Excellent. Um, Ashera, and then we'll close out with a final action from Bailey. All right. So if I understand correctly. Um, Three of your friends have just gone back to the temple you just escaped. Gone back. One's, one's doing it stealthy. The other two are following a group of berserkers, right? Right, right. <laughs> and uh, I mean, following a group of berserkers is its own kind of stealth. Uh, <laughs> Oh man. Um, 
And yeah. uh, you still got three friends who don't seem to know where to go that you just rescued. Uh, True. One of them um, is wearing nothing but a loincloth and a lot of mud. Yeah, yeah, he's in he's in bad shape. The other guys were all were beat up. So um, I think I would. Uh, I mean, the first thing I'd have to do is try to um, get them back to the uh, to the uh, southeast um, district. Is that what it's called? Yeah, southeast. Yeah. yeah, to the southeast district. The southeast side. The southeast side. <laughs> um, you know, uh, so that they can get uh, a little medical attention, some water, some food, some clothes, um, and then as soon as I know that they are good to go. Um, I mean, I know a way to get back into that place through the through Odin's temple now. So, right. I'm gonna go, that's how I'm gonna head back in that way. All right. Um, make a charisma check just to see how much trouble you get into while coming up through Odin's temple, which has now been alerted that uh, <laughs> the berserkers are going crazy in the basement. Oh, there's probably going to be some a certain amount of unfortunate. Let's see. Is there anything else? Checking your checking your awesome house rolls here. Let's see. You could you, uh, you could use your alignment. Um, oh, yeah, I haven't done that yet, right? Yeah, I don't uh, think so. That is what I will do. Um, Just be earnest and gold-hearted. <laughs> it still might not be enough. You know, people shouldn't judge me from the way I look, but whatever. Here we go. Um, so I made it. I got a four. Nice. This, I mean, being earnest and gold-hearted is is a sort of thing to do with the priest of Odin. <laughs> the more you know. Yeah. Awesome. Success. Uh, great, great. Uh, Bailey, what's that last action you'd like to take? Wait, you're you're muted. You're muted, Rory. Keep getting muted. All right. Um, so the people in the Temple of Odin have already kind of let us in. Yep. Okay. Or they've 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 let certain people in though. Letting you out is a different deal. You know, they 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 might want to interrogate you, keep you overnight. Uh, some of them have gone storming off into the sewers. Other people in the temple may not. Oh, okay. So they're going. Okay. So they've they've let you in. Letting you yeah. out is without without a questioning or. So I was able to free my people that I knew, right? Okay. Yeah. Ricky is free. And uh, yeah, Ricky's free. And Yuri, right? Uh, no, Yuri was, no, Yuri, Yuri was a dancer. Yeah, he, uh, he seemed to be a sort of a true believer there. Hmm. Yeah, he's lucky we didn't knife him. He might be a lost cause. Um, I think I am going to go back. I'm going to follow the uh, berserkers. All right. I'm going to go uh, help liberate some more people. Do a really quick narration. Um, now, I'm also looking for anything I can palm uh, while I'm there. <laughs> I'm going to make it worth my while. <laughs> right. I, I'm gonna stay way, way in the back. I'll be like, "Yeah, you guys go kill all that stuff," and I'll just, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's essentially what what he does. I mean, he follows them along. He, he uses their distraction as cover to, you know, sneak through and look for anything. I mean, he he knows these people are kind of evil scumbags, so he doesn't mind taking stuff from them. So, um, yeah, he's just gonna loot. You know, I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot of like room to carry stuff, but anything that looks you know particularly valuable, he'll steal or any kind of incense or anything like that that he can you know nab that kind of stuff. And um, you know, if he runs across anyone else who seems kind of iffy on them participating in this whole thing, maybe he'll try to convince them to come along with him. Now, who's going after the three of you? Are going after the the berserkers? Um, they come up in what looks like an under shrine, like some sort of thing. Um, and uh, 
let's well let's deal with a uh, Asher Ash first, who who finds a, a path back up into the main body of the temple, uh, that goes through another grate on the floor. Uh, the ritual has been clearly suspended or disrupted, and by going to the other side of the temple, um, you're able to find. Um, Alina, uh, locked in a room, get her back down into the sewers and go back up through, uh, the temple, uh, the, the, the temples across the street. Um, and, uh, certainly she's had better days, but, uh, is pretty happy that after helping you out so much in Goblin Town, you, you return the favor. Um, the berserkers make quick work of the zombies and go back up uh, another ladder into what looks like an undershrine uh, where they quickly engage uh, all the priests in the uh, in the uh, in the undershrine uh, and I'm going to ask the three of you went with the berserkers starting with Ashera uh correct oh, sherry you no no sorry sherry went back to the neighborhood starting with ephraim um rescue or punish rescue all right ephraim you're able to find the shopkeeper bill and get him out in the chaos and confusion um You notice as you as you get keep Bill out that uh, there's a, a gigantic shrine in the middle of the or a gigantic altar in the middle of the shrine that's like 15 feet off the ground, and where you had the big dramatic eye upstairs, there's a smaller gemstone encrusted eye uh, downstairs, and it's pointed directly at um, a spot in the wall that's surrounded by torches in this in this round shrine room. And uh, Kaftella, the uh, the head of the thieves' guild, is chained there. Do you rescue him? Yes, if I can. Okay. Yeah, you get you got him rescued. If I got a way to get him out of the chains, I'll try and get him out of them. You got him rescued. Uh, it's 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 not hard just to knock the chains out, and uh, for for you with the, the the mass confusion, just to knock the chains out. Um, Minoso, uh, you you see much the same thing. You go up into the Undershrine after the Berserkers. Do you want to rescue or punish? Absolutely. Definitely rescue. All right. You are able to um, find and rescue Friedlander. Um, and uh, on your way out, uh, kind of in a dazed drug state, coming down from uh, the main altar, you know, it's just sort of wrapped in a white sheet. You see one of Captella's lieutenants named Chavez, uh, who's an older woman, got a, a reputation for both uh, for a, a certain a certain amount of fairness, but also it's kind of a merciless fairness. Uh, and she looks confused and disoriented, clearly been given more of those drugs and she's just freed herself from something at the top of that sort of like giant shrine where that eye uh was do you help her out or leave her i'd help her out i mean you are you are kindness and duty sure uh you don't need to roll anything so don't agree uh, bailey that just leaves punishment for you uh, mm. Okay. Because everybody's been rescued. Yeah, I know. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> um, but you okay. see Deshi. Oh, standing, yes. 
kind of in the shadows, kind of evading the berserkers as they chase around the more plainly dressed priest. She has something you rarely see, but have seen it on occasion, which is a uniform of the Black Lotus, which is just sort of a basic black bodysuit with a Black Lotus emblem on it. She is clearly, clearly here in some official capacity. How would you deal with her? Um, does it look like she has anything interesting that she's carrying? Um, I am a pickpocket after all. Definitely has a, a couple of vials on her belt. And she looks like she's mainly focused on just staying hidden from the berserkers. Okay. She's actually actually pulling curtains around herself in, a, in what looks like an entryway to keep right. herself and the entryway hidden from the berserkers. All right. I will go over to her and say, I know a way out of here. Let's go. Follow me. Make a charisma check there. I was not going to have you make any charisma checks, but... Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Now, she's not hostile to me, right? You don't know. You don't think so. I mean, I'm, you know, okay. All right. Um, so I got a one. So nice. Good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's going to use my pluck, but I don't have to. All right. She asked you if you can take another. Uh, sure. And she pulls the curtain aside. Uh, and you, when she does that, you realize exactly how serious this ritual was and how far up it went. Yeah. Uh, uh, into, this is not just something where they, they went and bought a bunch of prisoners. These, these prisoners were clearly donated by the foes or, or by the, by the, by the Black Lotus. Um, trying to get my notes. Where did they go? Where did the correct notes go? Um, and you see a face that can only belong to one person, the Overlord's personal bodyguard and fixer. Uh, you recognize that face because there's only one of them in the city state uh, that has the the eight arms of a cuttlefish draping from his front maw. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> uh, and you lead. Are you going to lead Deshi out of here? Well, so my intention was when she tries to pull the curtain aside, I'm going to accidentally stumble and I'm going to grab those vials. Oh, yeah. You've grabbed them. Yeah. Okay. She's, yeah. She's clearly... Uh, are you are you planning to actually lead her out of there though? Um, let me think. Well, mm -hmm. you have, I will say now that you see that she has a mind flare with her. Yeah. Are you planning to actually show her how to get out? Yeah, I will. Nice. I'll get my revenge later, but I gotta find out what these vials do. Maybe they can poison her or something. Yeah, I don't think I should I should risk it with that mind flare right there because they'll probably figure out what I'm doing. Because <laughs> I don't uh, think my character knows what that is. He's just like, ah. Oh, you don't you don't know the word mind flare, but you, okay. do, you have seen this person before. He's just uh, freaky as all get out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not risking it. <laughs> the Overlord's personal bodyguard, and before you turn to run away, as soon as you get to the street level, his hand falls on your shoulder. Deshi's truly, clearly trying to get him clear of the sewers yeah. uh, and up into the temple Well, they'll be obliged to treat them well. Yeah. Um, uh, and she actually, once she gets into the sewers, she leads you to a different temple. Okay. Um, but as you kind of turn to split, his hand comes down and you get a marker from Akilatil the personal bodyguard of the of the uh, of the invincible overlord. Okay. Slip wow. to you. Almost with a almost with a level of skill that, that you would expect from yourself. Okay. Hmm. Uh, and that is it, folks. We are right at eleven o'clock. Uh -huh. Um, which is the end of the session. Um, I'm going to, uh, so I'm going to stop our broadcast and thank you guys in our audience. Uh, once we, once we stop the broadcast, we'll actually have time for Rose and Thorns, but I certainly understand if you guys need to slip out. Um, 
and uh, let's end things there.